Hey everyone, and welcome to this tutorial on learning JavaScript through making seven classic games. My name is Anya Kubo, and I'm a software developer and course creator on YouTube. In this course, I'll be teaching you how to use JavaScript methods and properties in order to build seven games in order of difficulty. This will be Rock, Paper, Scissors, Memory Game, Whack-A-Mole, 2D Breakout, Frogger, Connect4, and Space Invaders. If you're new to JavaScript, please make sure to do the games in order, as once I cover a method or property, it is unlikely that I will go into much detail on it again. By the end of this course, you will have used all of these JavaScript methods and properties. Now, who is this course for? This course is for anyone who has covered the fundamentals of JavaScript in theory and would like to use it in practice. So in other words, if you are familiar with what a function is, a variable is, what loops look like and so on, this is the course for you. However, if you have never touched JavaScript before and would like to have a go anyway, please do give it a go and see how you get on. I will be taking things super slow and explaining as much as I can along the way. Now, it is important to stress that these games are just to learn JavaScript and will be the bare bones of the game. This means that I will be giving you the most basic level of code for the game to work. I'm doing this for two reasons. Reason one being that it would be too much to build a game with all the real features of the official games, as well as tests for them. And reason two is that I want to give you the opportunity to take the game, build on top of them, add features, add levels, style them up and truly make them your own. Now, some of you might have already seen this video before. This is an updated version that takes things much slower with a more beginner approach, so I hope you enjoy it. Next up, we are going to be making a game of rock, paper, scissors. In this game, I will be showing you how to make a game that checks for a win, lose or draw against a computer that randomly selects either rock, paper or scissors. If you pick rock against scissors, you win, but against paper, it will lose. If you pick scissors and the computer chooses rock, you lose, but will win against paper. And if you pick paper, well, you guessed it, you will lose against scissors, but win against rock. If you choose the same answers of the computer, it is a draw. By the end of this tutorial, you will have used all of these following JavaScript methods and properties. Okay, so let's get to it with our first example. Now, this approach, as I mentioned, is gonna be a little bit more beginner friendly, I think. Um, we really sort of take stuff step by step and we don't use switch statements. We use if else or if statements as well as um, just use num numbers more than anything as well as HTML rather than just purely JavaScript. So hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and hopefully you watch the other two as well to show me which one you prefer better. So yeah, definitely let me know that. Uh, let's go. So first off, here is my project. As mentioned, there will be no styling in this, so I simply have an index.html file, and then I have linked my app.js file to my index.html, so because my app.js file is in the root of my project, all I have to do is simply name the file. Um, obviously, it's a JavaScript file because of the JS extension. We are telling our code editor to treat this as a JavaScript file. So make sure that the script tag is at the end of your body. So there we go. All the code that we're going to, all the HTML code that we write is going to have to be above uh, this script tag. Now we could have used a DOM content loader in the app.js file. So I do that in a lot of my videos too. So that is just another way that you can work. So you can put the script tag at the bottom or you can use a DOM content loaded uh, event listener. The choice is up to you. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do, like I said, I am gonna be working with HTML and CSS in this video, is I'm just gonna put some H2 tags so this is my first H2 tag, and I'm just gonna put compute, computer, computer choice, computer, computer choice, and in it, I'm gonna have a span to sort of break up that H2 tag, in which I'm just gonna have an ID of computer choice, because we're gonna wanna pick that out to work with in our JavaScript file later. So we have the computer choice, 
I'm also going to have user choice. So let's put user choice. You can have your choice if you want. It's, it's up to you, you. And then finally, let's also have a result. So I'm just going to have result like so and give it the ID of, you guessed it, result. So we can pick it out to work with it in our JavaScript file later. Now, along with that, I'm just going to have a button. Um, let's put rock in it and then just give it the ID of rock like so. Again, so we can pick it out in our JavaScript. Um, and then let's have, I'm using Command D by the way to select that. And I'm gonna put paper, once again, Command D so I can select both, and skizzers. Skizzers? Skizzers, there we go. So there we go. Now, if I open this up, I'm gonna copy the path and simply go to my browser. This is what you should now see in your browser. So I'm just gonna get the inspect up as well. Great. Now the next thing I wanna do is do some logic so that if I click on rock, rock will show up here. And at the same time, a computer choice will be generated and then we can figure out who's won or lost. So for this, I'm now gonna have to go to my JavaScript file. So in here, the first thing I'm going to do is actually pick out all the uh, elements with these IDs. So I'm picking out essentially the span and I'm doing it by the ID. Um, so I'm going to use document get element by ID. I could use query selector. I'll show you how to do that in another lesson, but I'm simply just going to pick out computer choice like this. And I'm going to store it as const computer choice so we can work with that element in our javascript let's do the same for user choice so once again i'm simply picking out this span based by the id so that's what i'm doing and let's save this as user choice and let's do the same for the result of course so i'm actually just going to copy this um let's call this result display and then pick it out by the ID of result because that's what this is. It's an ID of result. Great. So we've done that. The next thing I want to do is actually get all the possible choices. So there's many ways I can do it. Um, this is the way that I'm going to show you for this tutorial. Uh, const possible choices and I'm actually going to use a query selector to get all of them so document query selector all and I'm going to pick out everything in here that is a button element okay one thing I could have done is given this as a class name of button and if I gave that same class name to all of these I could pick it out by class name, but as I only have three buttons here and I don't plan on putting any more buttons here, okay? So keep that in mind when you're styling it up. Um, if you wanna add more buttons in here, perhaps use the class name on those buttons. Otherwise, this is gonna pick up that button that you create. So const possible choices. I've picked out all the buttons so I can use them. Now I'm going to grab the buttons, possible choices, and for each button, or I can call it a possible choice, whatever you want, pos possible choice. I want to, I'm just gonna minimize this because we don't really need that. For each possible choice, I'm gonna grab each possible choice and use add event listener to listen out for a click. So if I click any of the buttons, I want essentially something to happen, okay? So I want this, we can pass through a function. I'm literally just gonna pass through a function like so. And then what I want to happen is, well, I wanna pass through the event. So E for event. And then I want to actually get the target ID. So whatever I click, I wanna get the ID and I wanna save that as um, the user choice. But I wanna save it globally, okay? So I'm just gonna put let 
user choice. So we can access it wherever. So whatever e the e-target ID is, I'm saving it to user choice. It's just going to save it here so I can use it in my file. So that is what I am storing. So the next thing I could do is actually get the user choice. Maybe we should rename this because user choice display because we now have two user choice that we can't have that display so now i'm going to get the user choice display and using the property of in html html i'm once again just going to assign it the user choice okay so let's see if that works click scissors click paper click rock nice let's carry on um i'm just gonna actually Put a space there. Oops, not there. What am I doing? You computer choice space space result space. Okay. So we are displaying the user choice. The next thing that I said I want to do is generate a computer choice. So let's write a function that's called generate computer choice. Um, okay. What's that function going to look like? Generate computer choice. So what I actually want to happen here is I want to get a random number, right? So uh, I can use const, const random number, and then I'm going to use math random, and then multiply it by, I can use the number three, sure, um, if that's what I want. I can also use possible choices length. Okay, so that is the same as just simply putting the number three. But for beginners, I'll just keep it as three for now. Um, again, like maybe I'll just put, or you can use possible choices length, as that will return a three. Um, okay. So now that we've got a random number, I actually need to wrap this in math floor to round down that random number because that'll give me a random number, okay? Uh, and then we want to make sure that it's a full integer. Let's check that. Random number. So that will give me a random number that's actually from zero to two as we count in indexes. So I could just get this and add one just for readability if I wanted to. So now let's check this. One, three, two, two. So it will always be either one or two or a three, right? So there we go. Um, so now if random number deeply equals one, let's say that computer choice uh, equals rock. I'm just making that up. It could be scissors. Let computer choice. And then if random number equals two, say scissors. And if random number equals three, let's say paper. Okay. So and then let's actually uh, get the computer choice. So computer choice display in a HTML and just show the computer choice. So now, there we go. Great, cool. Okay, so we're randomly generating computer choice and randomly generating a choice for us. Um, as I said, I've done it this way as I think it's beginner friendly. However, there is a much neater way we could do all of this that wouldn't involve saying equals one, equals two, equals three, which I'm really excited to show you. But I think as a beginner, this probably might make a lot more sense and is more readable. But you know, let me know. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's actually get the result. So I'm going to write another function, function uh, get result. Now, if computer choice deeply equals or equals up to you, 
Um, user choice. Well, then uh, return. We'll, we'll get the result. So let result. And then we will say it's a draw. However, oops. So that is one. Now, if computer choice this time equals um, rock, oops, and user choice equals, let's say, paper, then who wins? Then you lost, right? Computer, rock, paper, yeah, fine. Now, now we have rock and scissors. Well, then you lost again. And then we have uh, actually no, you win. You win here. Computer is rock, but you have paper. You win. I should really learn how to play rock paper scissors. Computer has rock, but you have scissors. You lose. If computer has um, paper. And you have scissors, you win. If computer has paper, but you have rock, you lose. Um, what else is there? If computer has scissors, and you have rock, you win. And then a computer has scissors, but you have paper. Scissors, paper, you lose. I think that's right. Oh my God. Okay. Cool. So now that we've got the result, get result, we've got the function get result. I'm just going to put it in here too. So great. Every time we click, we do all of this essentially. Now I could move this function out. If I wanted to, or I could just keep it there, the choice is totally up to you. So now, let's have a go. Scissors, the computer chose paper. Oh wait, the results are not showing. Ah, we didn't do in a, in our, um, let's get the result display in an HTML result. Cool. So paper, oh, you lose. Scissors, I chose scissors, the computer chose rock, so I lost. I chose rock, computer chose scissors, I win. Cool, it's a draw. Amazing. So that is how I would show you how to make rock, paper, scissors as a beginner. As I mentioned, please take this go wild, improvement as you wish. Um, I did do it so it's quite verbose and it's quite easy to read. Uh, and of course, I did these random numbers here because I just thought, again, it was more readable for a beginner. So if you are a beginner, let me know what you think. Um, is this clear enough for you? Uh, I'm gonna move on. So once again, no styling, of course. Uh, let's do it. In this section, we are gonna look at memory game. Memory game is a game where you as the player have to match two cards on a board until none are left. We are gonna be building out our board game with the use of these following JavaScript methods and properties. By the end of this tutorial, you will have a game that looks like this, okay? So once again, basic styling so you can take the game, style it up and make it your very own. Okay, so the first thing that we are gonna do is start off our project. I'm using WebStorm, which is an IDE that I'm gonna use in order to start my project. Of course, feel free to use VS Code or whatever code editor you wish. So in WebStorm, I'm just going to create a new project. So go ahead and click here. It's going to be an empty project, which I am going to choose to call Memory Game, just like so, and click Create. And great. So once my directory has been made, I'm just going to add some files to it. So I'm going to create a new HTML file, and let's just call it index.html. 
So there we go, index.html. And I'm also gonna create a CSS file for all our CSS. So a new styles, so dot CSS file, or I could just choose CSS. Just click on that. And of course, a JavaScript file. This is a JavaScript tutorial. So here we go. I'm just gonna call it app.js, just like so. So there we go, there we have our three files. I'm gonna start off with the HTML. So let's first off give this a title. This is just some boilerplate code that has been generated for me by WebStorm. If you don't have this generated, then please uh, pause here and just copy all this out. There we go, that's a little bit bigger for you. Now we're gonna to have to give this a title. This is not gonna go show up in our browser. This is actually gonna show up in the tab of our browser, so memory game. Once again, this will not be visible. Hopefully you should know that by now if you code HTML, but for those of you who need a refresher, this will be, I'll just show you now. Let's go ahead and open this up. And there we go, memory game. So I used a shortcut that WebStorm offers me, which is just to click here, which will open up in Chrome. But if you don't, just go ahead and uh, copy the path for this file, the index.html file, and just simply paste it in the browser, like so. Okay, both ways will work. So I'm just gonna inspect the page to show you what we're gonna be using to debug. We're gonna be using the console log to debug. And then we can also use this tab to see what elements are in here. At the moment, there's nothing in our body tags, but as you will see, memory game is showing up in the browser tab, because that is essentially what the title tag here does. Okay, make sure that it is in the head tags like so. Okay, so first things first, let's start off with some HTML. Now, in this game, like I said, this is a JavaScript tutorial, so my HTML is gonna be super basic. We're gonna be adding most of our elements through JavaScript. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do that now. First off, actually, we do need to link up our style sheet. So go ahead and use the link tag like so. Thank you, tab nine. And the uh, href is gonna be styles CSS, just like that. And let's just close off our link tag. There we go. We can actually just make this, sorry, self-closing, just like that. Okay, so what we've done is we've now linked up our style sheet. We have just used the style CSS file as it's not in any directory, so it's just in the root of our project, the same uh, location as our index.html file. So that's all I really needed to do here. Great, and now let's link up our script. So to do this, I'm gonna use the script tag, just like so, and I'm gonna use source app.js in order to link up our oops, JavaScript. So there we go. What I am saying is that after all the elements have been read, then I want to go to my script tag and read whatever is in this file, okay? So make sure to put it at the bottom between your two body tags. And once you have that, let's go ahead and start adding some HTML. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just add a h3 tag like so, and in it, I'm gonna keep the score, so just like so, and then with the span, I'm gonna break this up, so that's what the span tag does, it breaks up these two tags. I'm actually just going to pick this out with an ID. I'm giving an ID so we can pick this out later with our JavaScript. So we can now pick out with our JavaScript this whole element, Okay, the span, the two span tags by its ID. I'm gonna show you how to do that later. So we've got our score and then I'm gonna create a div and actually give it the, uh, we can give it the ID grid if we want, or we can use class because we are gonna style it up, but essentially we wanna be picking this out with our JavaScript later too. So now if we look in our game, we will just see a score, okay? We won't see anything else. 
because you know the span tag it essentially doesn't have anything in it yet and our div here doesn't have any styling and it doesn't also have anything in it yet so great let's carry on oops source source so first things first let's actually get to adding some elements to create our grid in here so I'm just going to go ahead and open up my app.js file. So as we saw from the beginning, we need to essentially create 12 cards. So we can do this in JavaScript and I'm going to show you how. First off, I'm actually going to go ahead and start off creating an array. I'm going to call it the card array. So const card array and an array means we open up these two brackets. This is essentially an array, and I've assigned the array to the value card array. And inside my array, I'm going to be adding objects, okay? So this is essentially an object. It's gonna have a name, and let's go ahead and call this fries. And then it's also gonna have an image. And I'm going to put a path to my images, which I'm gonna store in an images folder. So again, in here, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new directory this time called images. And I'm just going to put in some images that I have pre-made. Okay, so here they are in my downloads folder. One, two, three, four, five, six food images, one blank image, which is going to be the back of our card, and just one white image for, you know, if we get a match. So all of these, I'm just going to drag into my images folder. I am going to share this repository with you in the description, so you feel free to take these if you wish. Okay, so there you go. As you will see, they are all here. Now, so now in my array, I'm going to actually put the path to these images. So I'm going to go into the images directory, I'm going into here, and I'm going to get the fries PNG, thank you tab 9. Okay, so here is our first object that I have made. And I'm actually going to make another object this time, let's call this cheese burger. And then of course, this needs to be cheese burger too. So we've got our fries object, our cheeseburger object. We also need the hot dog object. So name hot dog image images hot dog PNG. And we are making this array as a reminder, remember, to create our grid with. We're going to use this to create our grid with all of these images on it. So we've got our hot dog. The next thing I want to do is ice cream. So ice cream, ice cream. What else do we have? We have milkshake next. Milkshake. And this should be milk shake. Just one more, I believe, because there should be six pizza. And the URL and the file is called pizza PNG. Okay, so there we go. There are our six essential images. And I'm just going to go ahead and get all of these six. Oops and just paste them in again because we need 12 cards, okay? We need 12 cards with two matching each time. So there is our card array. Now what I need to do is essentially get them, you know, uh, in a random order. So if I just console log out card array and look in the console log, you will now see that same entire array that we just wrote showing up here, okay? So now to get this uh, sorted randomly, I'm gonna show you what to do. I am going to essentially get the array and use the JavaScript method of sort to essentially sort everything in the array randomly. And to do this, I'm gonna use math 
random. And uh, this is a nice trick. You just do that. So this is a little bit advanced, so apologies for this. It's just a nice way or trick to sort an array randomly. So it's definitely one to remember. The sort JavaScript method works by comparing two values, okay? It compares the two values and then sorts through it. And because math random, the math random that you see here returns back a number anywhere from zero to less than minus one. We are checking that it's either, you know, smaller than 0 0.5 or larger than 0 0.5. So the first value in the array is going to go, ah, it's smaller than 0 0.5. And then it's ah, larger than 0 0.5. And it will shuffle it based on that. Okay, a lot to get your head around, but you can watch my uh, sort uh, algorithm explainer. I will make sure to link that in the description below. This is advanced though, so if you can't get your head around it, don't worry. Just remember that this is a nice shortcut to shuffling an array randomly. Okay, so now if we console log the card array, it should be random each time. So we've got fries, cheeseburger, pizza, hot dog, cheeseburger, milkshake, cheeseburger, fries. So that is working. Let's carry on. So now that we're getting a array that is shuffled randomly, what I'm going to do is use that to create our board. So first off, like I said, let's go in here and let's grab the div with the ID of grid. And we're going to grab it by using the ID. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use document query selector and I'm going to search for the ID of grid. So this hash here means we're looking for an ID of grid and we're going to go into our document and use query selector to search for the ID. So this method essentially looks through the whole thing and finds a ID that is grid and goes, ah, oh, okay, that must mean we want this element, the whole thing. So let's save this as something. I'm going to save this as const grid display, or we can just call it grid. It is up to you. So now if I console log grid display, you will see we have picked out the div with the ID of grid. This is looking good. Okay, so we've got the grid. And now I'm just going to make a little spaces here so we can see what's going on. Once we have the grid, I'm going to write a function called create board. So this is what a function looks like. There we go. And a function essentially does something. And we have called this function create board so that if we need, we can reuse it or it just makes everything more readable. So what I want to do is essentially for each item in my array, I want to create an element. So to do this, I can use for each or I can use a for loop. I'm going to use a for loop as I think maybe that's a bit more beginner friendly for let i equals zero. So I'm just writing the syntax for a for loop. This is what a for loop looks like. I and then we have a number here and then I increment by one. So this is the syntax for a for loop. What is essentially saying is that we're saying start from zero. So let i equals zero. And as long as i is smaller than 10, we want to increment i by one. Okay. So for loop right here. This is what a for loop looks like. And essentially what we are saying is that we want something to happen, you know, 10 times. Because as long as i is smaller than 10, we start counting from zero. So we go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, nine, which is essentially 10 items if you're counting from index zero. And then we stop because i then becomes larger than 10. So we can't execute this loop anymore. So what do I want to happen? Well, like I said, I want to create images, right? So I'm going to use document create element, which is a great JavaScript method that will allow us to create an element. And I want to create an image. So I actually just need to write this. So we are creating an image now. Let's go ahead and save this as card. So I've saved it as the constant card. 
And what I want to do to this image once I create it, well, I want to add a, I want to add one of these images to it. So let's grab the card we have just created. If I actually console log this out just so we can see everything, and I just console log, console log out card, and then perhaps I as well so we can see what's going on. And now I call this function because don't forget we need to call the function in order for the function to release all of its wonderfulness and essentially, you know, execute the code in it. So I've called the function now. So let's go back here and refresh this page. And you will see that I'm creating an image tag each time with the index number all the way to nine. So that is what I'm doing so far in my function. So to the image tag, well, I want to get the image, so we've stored this as card in our JavaScript, and I'm going to use another JavaScript method. The method is called set attribute, and we're going to set the source attribute to my image, as well as, uh, for now, actually, I'm just going to give it a blank card. So we're going to go into our images directory, and we're going to get the blank card, so blank PNG. So now I'm going to console log out the card after we've add the source uh, attribute with image blank PNG. And we're going to look in source. And there you go. You will see the path to the blank images file. So that's what we have done. OK. So we've done that. We also want to add, I'm also going to add a data ID so that each card has an ID that is unique. So data ID, and that's just going to be I, so we can keep track of each one. So now let's go ahead and have a look. And if we refresh this, you will see the source and the data ID has been added to my card, or in other words, my image uh, tag. So, Great, and then of course we're still printing out the number to the side. So now that we've done that, we can see it, we need to actually put it in something. We wanna put it in the grid display. We wanna put it in between these two tags. Okay, so that's essentially what we're gonna do with JavaScript, however. So what I'm gonna do is get the grid display, and I'm going to append the card to it. We can use a pen, we can use a pen child, okay? There's actually two methods to our disposal. So now, ta-da! We have added the 12 cards into our div with the ID of grid. Amazing. Of course, you won't see it here, okay? We have done, we've added this in JavaScript and it is being displayed here. Okay, think of this as sort of just more of a starting point that you want to start out with. And then we're adding stuff with JavaScript, okay? And that's being added through the script tag. So that's why you won't see it. it's being added after this. And that is what is being displayed in our browser. Cool, so maybe let's give this a little bit of styling while we are here. There's, again, not much styling in this because as you know, as I've stressed many times, I don't want this to be about styling. I want you to be able to take this game and truly make it your own, style it up, really do whatever you wish to it. Add more features, add more levels, perhaps add, you know, like level two will have many more cards. I mean, that is totally an option. Uh, what I'm gonna do is actually use display flex well, actually, let's give it a width first. Let's make it 400 pixels and height 300 pixels. This is because I'm just going off of the size of the cards that I pre-made. So now our grid. All right, we need to, well, we can pick it out by the ID as well if we want, because that was a class. Uh, I thought I gave this a class of grid, but I'd give an ID of grid. So we need to look for the ID of grid. Okay, so now the ID of grid has the width of 400, height of 300, but all of these divs have essentially stretched to fit it. I don't want that. So what I'm gonna do, so now, you will see that the grid 
has a width of 400 and height of 300. It would seem we are missing some cards. Why is that? Ah, that's because we're only looping to 10. Sorry, that's my fault. This was the boilerplate that I uh, showed you. Sometimes it's good to see mistakes though. Instead of looping over just same 10 times, we want to get the array and get its length. Okay, so I'm going to get the array and use the property of length to find out exactly how many elements are in our array and how many times we need to loop. So now, there we go. We have all of our cards, all 12 cards. So this is looking good. Maybe I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see everything a little bit better. And I'm also just going to add display flex, flex wrap wrap. Just to get rid of those lines in the middle. So display flex essentially means so by adding display flex, it means we can utilize the flex wrap, okay, from flex box to make sure that all of these divs just wrap over each other nicely, just like so. Great. So that's actually it for our styling. That's all the styling we're going to do. So I'm going to shut this down now and get rid of the index HTML file as well. And let's just focus on our JavaScript. So wonderful. We have created our board. And now, once we've created our board, I'm actually going to write a function that allows us to flip the card when we click it. So let's go ahead and write our function for this. Function flip card. So once again, there's our function. That's what a function looks like. And what I'm going to do is essentially think of which card I clicked on. So to do this, I actually need to add an event listener to each card as well. So right here, I'm going to get the card and I'm going to use add event listener of the JavaScript method that will allow us to listen out for events. So in this case, I am listening out for a click. So if I click on the card, I want something to happen. And that something is going to be the function flip card, which I'm going to pass through here as a callback. Notice I'm not calling it, okay, otherwise it'd be called straight away. I only want to call it if we click on the card. There's loads of events you can pass through here, okay, just check out the MDN docs. I've chosen to pick click because I want to listen out if we click. We could use mouse over, um, there's many things you can do. So for now, I'm just going to console log clicked. Okay, so now if I click on a card, clicked, 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 clicked. So we are listening out for clicks on the cards. That is pretty good. The next thing I'm actually going to show you how to do is on the click, well, I actually want to get the card I clicked data ID. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to use the this keyword. The this keyword essentially will let us use whatever element we clicked, okay, and get its get attribute. So I'm gonna use get attribute to get its data ID. Okay, and then let's save this as let card ID. So now I'm gonna say click and it's gonna show us the card ID because I'm going to pass that through. This can be a const, it's not going to change. And if I click it, you will now see that I'm getting each card's card ID. So here are the data IDs that I'm picking out and I'm just printing them in my console log. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Please do have a play around here if uh, you wish. The this keyword is essentially what is allowing us to interact with whatever element we click. Okay, and we're getting its data ID and we're saving it as the card ID and then we're just console logging it out. So we're getting the card ID, but why are we doing this, right? Well, we are doing this so that we know exactly which card we clicked and we can then pass it through into our array to get the name, 
okay? So that's quite cool. And it also means that if someone's inspecting our code, they won't be able to, you know, inspect it and figure out what's under our cards because we're not saying, we're just giving them an ID. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to get my card array and I'm going to pass through the card ID that we just picked out in order to return the name, okay? So if I just, con I'll do this step by step. I'm gonna console log the card ID. So console log, if I click on this one, well, we know the first one has a data ID of zero. So let's click it, oops, click clicked zero and I'm getting returned ice cream image ice images ice cream so we know that the ice cream image lives there now okay and we just want to get its name and store it in an array so for the next time that we click the next one if they match we know it's a match so let's get this object's name so I can do so by clicking dot name uh, by the way Actually, let's console log that out the whole card array after the shuffle, just so we know if everything's working correctly. So, this one's gonna have data ID zero, click, clicked on zero, and we have got its name. So we've gone into the array and got its name because the first item in our randomly shuffled array has the name pizza and has the image, this one. Cool, so hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, please do have a play around here. So there we go, we are getting the card, we're getting the name back from our random card array. And what I wanna do is put it into another array. So I'm gonna create an array up here. And let's just call this uh, const cards chosen and make it an empty array. I can use const because, you know, we're not gonna be changing the array. We're just gonna be pushing things into it. So it can be a const. In fact, you know, some people would argue and say that for best practice, it should be a const. So I'm gonna get the array and I'm gonna use the JavaScript method, method of push to push an item into that array. And what I wanna push through is just the name. Okay, so there we go. And if I console log the cards chosen now, So let's go ahead and click that one. You will see I've pushed in fries into the chosen array because fries must be here. It's the first one, there we go, fries. I've just pushed through the name. And if I click another one, I've added ice cream. So obviously these aren't a match and what I ideally need to do is, you know, clear them out and start again. So let's deal with that a little bit later, however because what I also wanna do when I flip the card is actually add the image. So once again, I'm gonna get this card that I clicked or this element and use set attribute, set attribute. And this time I'm just gonna use source. And instead of adding a blank image, I'm actually going to get go into the card array again, pass through the card ID and get that card's image. I think I spelled image, image. Okay, and just assign it to the card. So let's check it out. Milkshake and pizza, cool. And of course they're not a match. So one other thing that I want to do is if cards chosen, so I'm using the cards chosen array that I just made, and if it's length suddenly equals two, right? Because we have two items in there, so we want to check for a match. I'm going to uh, check for a match. But let's maybe do this after some time has passed, or you could do it immediately, but I think it's nice to see both the cards first. So for this, I'm gonna use set timeout, and I'm just going to pass through a function that I wanna check. So set timeout as a timing event, uh, or yes, a JavaScript method that will essentially call a function after a certain amount of time has passed. So I want the first parameter you need to pass through is the function. So we're gonna write a function called check match. And the second is gonna be the time that I want passed before we call this function. I'm gonna say it's 500 milliseconds. So let's write our check match function. 
function check match. So for now, I'm just going to say console log check for match. And I'm actually going to get rid of all these console logs so we can see everything a little bit clearer. So click, click, color, oops, I misspelled something, console log check for match. Click, click, check for match. Okay, so obviously two items are in our chosen cards array, so we're checking for a match. And what do we want to do in our check for match function? Well, we want to do a few things. Uh, first off, I want to get both of the items in my chosen card array and essentially check, I guess, if they match. So I'm going to go into my card's chosen array and get the first item. And if it equals the card's chosen second item, so let's make this an if statement. If this is true, if this statement is true, well, then we know it's a match. So let's alert ourselves saying, you found a match. Of course, if you're coding this, you don't have to make this an alert. You can make it a nice, neat pop up. But, you know, as I said, we're just doing the mega basics here. So there is our alert. And what do we want to happen if there's a match? Well, I'm going to have to go into the cards. We're going to get the cards. So in fact, right before we do this, I'm going to write something that will get every single card on my grid. And I'm going to do this with document query selector, but I'm going to choose query selector all to look for all the cards. So essentially all the, let's say all the uh, image elements that live inside my div with the ID of grid. So I can do this by just selecting all the images because you know that it's a small project. So I could just look for the image tag or if you want to add more images later on and be really specific, you could say that you want to look into the div with the ID of grid, sorry, the dots for class name, the ID of grid and find all the images that look inside of it. So that's if you want to make this project bigger. I'm just going to keep this like this for now because I'm not going to add anything else in there. So maybe it's a little bit overkill. So I'm searching for every image in my entire document and I'm going to save this as cards. Okay. So if there's a match, what do I want to do? Well, I want to get the cards and I need to go into the cards and find the cards by their IDs. So just like we're saving the names of our chosen cards here, I'm actually going to also make another array const uh, and let's call this cards chosen IDs and make this an empty array too. So when we push the card in, we're pushing in the name, but I'm also going to push its ID in. So push the name, cards chosen IDs, push the this items get, or we can just use the card ID. So I'm going to push in the card ID into the chosen IDs. So I'm going to show you what this looks like actually now before we move on. Console log cards chosen, but also console log cards chosen IDs. Oops. So click. So what's happening here? These are the cards chosen and we're also saving the IDs. ID zero and one have been pushed into an array. And now we're going to use that because we're going to go into the cards that we've just picked out. So all the cards in our document and we're going to pass through the chosen card IDs first item. And we're going to use set attribute source images 
white PNG. So I'm just going to talk you through this a little bit. So what I'm saying, let's just console log this out. Console log all the cards. So one, two. So here are all my images. And what I'm saying is I want to go into, I want to find this card exactly. And I know this has an ID of zero. So I'm going to go into this array and get this card essentially, or this image tag. And I'm just going to assign it the background color of white if the two are a match. So let's just try again a match. Okay, so you found it's a match. And then I've turned this background to be white because I've essentially added a image white PNG to it. So let's do the same for the other one as well. So what I'm going to do is just grab this line and the second item in this chosen cards at chosen ID array, we're also going to add a white image to. Okay, so if it's a match, we add the white images to those cards. What I'm also going to do is on those same cards, so let's go into the cards, pass through the ID, the first ID in the card chosen ID array, and we're going to remove event listener, remove event listener to stop listening out for clicks on the card. Okay, so that will just stop any weird uh, activities happening because we want to remove the ability to click on the card. So great, and also I'm going to make another array because we want to start collecting const cards one. Okay, we want to know exactly how many matches we have. So all I'm going to do is cards one and I'm going to push in the content of the cards chosen array, which will either be something like hamburger and fries, okay? Or whatever two matches. I guess if it's matched, there'll be hamburger, hamburger. So there we go. We are recording how many cards we have won, how many matches we have. Great. And of course, we then need to start again. So after all this has happened, so I'm just going to do it down here. We then need to get our cards chosen array and just make it empty again so we can start this process all over again. Uh, ah, okay, so we do actually need this to be a let card, let, because if we want to just replace this with an empty array, that needs to be let. And we're going to change this to a let one as well because we again are going to want this to be an empty array. So we can start the whole process again. Wonderful. So we have read the logic of what happens if the two cards are a match. Now, we can also do something to alert if we click the same image. So if uh, cards, actually maybe let's save this. I'm gonna save this up here as const option one ID just to make things a bit read, easier to read for us, option two ID. And that's gonna be the card second ID in our cards chosen IDs array. So now I can just simply use this variable instead, just like so, because I am using it quite a lot. So this just makes it a little bit neater. So now if card option one, so if the ID equals card option two ID, well then let's just do an alert. You click the same card because that is technically true. You have clicked the same image. So that's all I want to happen. Cool. And then we can start again as well. So if you click on the same image, we're going to reset everything. Great. So we've done something for if, you know, you click on the same card, 
we've done something for if uh, we found a match, but now we need to write something for anything else that happens. So if it's not a match, then what do I want to happen? I guess we just want to change them back to being blank, right? So we just want to flip them back. So I'm going to do that by getting the blank image, which actually isn't blank. We're just turning it back to this one, okay? So we flipped it over, it's become a cheeseburger. It's not a match, so then we have to flip it back to here. However, if it was a match, we just want the white one, okay? So that's what I'm doing. I'm flipping it back and then we empty both the cards chosen and the cards chosen ID array. So there we go. And then let's also do an alert that says, sorry, try again. Great. Now, the last thing that we want to happen in the check for matches function is if we get all of the cards, right? So if suddenly cards one, so our cards one array length equals the card array length, length, but then divided by two, okay? Because obviously if there's uh, 12 cards, we can only get six matches. So that is what this line says, we don't actually need to have this like so. And then we can, you know, you can do an alert or we can also just show it in the result. So I'm gonna grab this span by the idea of result and maybe let's go ahead and pick it out the same place we do the grid. So we're going to use document query selector to pick out the ID of result and let's save this as result display just like so. So if it's the end, I'm going to get the results display. I'm going to use inner HTML to say Congratulations. You found them all. Okay. Uh, and otherwise, I actually want to just add the score to the results in the HTML. So we add the score when we find a match, right? So I'm just going to get the results in the HTML. And what do I want to display? Well, actually we could just show this, let's just show it as a default after every time that we click check match. And I'm just gonna show the, um, I guess the cards one array length, right? Because again, if we get, if we push something into the cards one array, we get, it's just like getting one point. Uh, instead of inner HTML, we can also use text content if we wish. So maybe let's go ahead and put that here as well. And then of course we also need to change these back to being blank. Great. So I think this is it. Let's check it out. So that's a match. We found a match. You get one to the score. These turn blank. That's not a match, try again. And as you can see here, you can't cheat and inspect, right? So we're literally just guessing. Two, 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 two. I'm not really paying attention, maybe I should be. There's a pizza, there's a pizza. Found a match, that's two points. Cheeseburger, milkshake, milkshake. Cool, cheeseburger, cheeseburger. Cool, ice cream, hot dog. Hot dog, hot dog, and let's see if this works. Found a match, and congratulations, we found them all, and we can't click on anything else because we've removed the event listener from all the cards. Amazing! So hopefully this made sense.
I've really enjoyed teaching you guys how to make this game a memory game. Again, it's just the mega, mega basics. Please take this game, make your own style up, truly make it incredible, make pop-ups, add more levels. I can't wait to see what you have made. Now we are onto our third game, which is going to involve some timing events. In this section, we are gonna build a game of whack-a-mole. This game will involve us having to build a grid that randomly displays a mole that we have to click with our mouse in order to get a point. We have to get as many points as possible in the time we define. By the end of this tutorial, you will have used all of the following JavaScript methods and properties. So what are we waiting for? Let's get to it. Okay, so first things first, here is my file setup in which I have some standard HTML boilerplate making sure that my style sheet has the correct path to my actual style sheet, which is here. And same for the script tag to pick up my JavaScript, making sure that the path, the relative path is the same. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do for my game of whack-a-mole is uh, make a grid. So above the script tag, make sure it's above the script tag i'm just going to make a div that has the class of grid and in here well i'm just going to put in nine divs as i want my whack-a-mole grid to be three by three and then i'm going to give each of them a class of square i could technically add these in javascript but you know it's not that many so i'm just gonna put in the nine divs, each with their own ID. So one, two, three, four. This is so we can identify each one, but I want each one to look the same. So I'm gonna style all of them as squares and that's why I have chosen to do it this way. So there we go. That is our grid. We of course need to style it so we can see it. While we are here, I'm also going to add a um, H2 tag for the score. So I actually want my score to show up here. I'm gonna hard code it as zero and just give this idea of score so we can pick it out later with our JavaScript. I also wanna have another H2 tag that is gonna tell us how much time we have left. So I want the game to count down from 60 seconds. And I'm just gonna put time left. And you know what, I'm also gonna give them a label. So quite simply, I'm just gonna make it really basic. Please style this better than the way I'm doing it right now. I just wanna give you the sort of um, skeleton to make your own. So your score, and time left. Okay, this is looking good. Let's style it up so we can see it in our browser. So in here, I'm just gonna pick out the grid and then the grid. Well, I'm gonna use display flex and I'll show you why in a bit. Um, actually, let's get rid of it so I can show you. So I'm just gonna get rid of it. For now, I'm just gonna give this a width. So let's say each of our squares is gonna have, uh, let's make each square 200 pixels uh, wide and high. So which means this would be 600 pixels. I'm give this a height of 600 pixels. So that will look like a square and then let's um, we could give it a border or we can give each square a border. So let's do that. So every square with the class of square, every div, sorry, with the class of square, we know we are looking for divs with classes because we put the dot. Same for grid, we're looking for a class, a div or an element with the class of grid to style. So let's make each square. We decided that each square we want to be 200 pixels with ah uh, 200 pixels, so height 200 pixels, width 200 pixels. And then I'm actually gonna give each one, let's give each one a border. Um, I'm just gonna go border color, and be really simple, of black. Okay, so this might be a problem because I don't know how thick the border is, in which case our grid might look a bit strange, but let's go ahead and see. 
So I'm going to copy the path and I'm just going to put it into our browser. So here is our grid. You can see all the squares inside it. However, they don't seem to have the border color. Uh, that's because we need to give it a border style of solid. We can actually maybe just change this. It's too much for me. I can do border solid black one pixel. So that's another alternative. It's just like a shorthand of what I wrote before. And I'm also assigning the border a width so that we can know how big the border is going to be. So now if I refresh, we now get the nine divs stacks over each other. What we need is for them to snake over each other so that they can fit in. And I could do so by adding display flex to my grid. So now if I refresh it, see all the squares will try fit into my grid. So if I go on grid, there's the grid and they're all trying to fit in it. I want them to stack over each other like a snake. So I can do that by adding flex wrap wrap. And there we go. Now they don't fit. The third one isn't going here and that's because we need to make the grid fit the border too. So what will that be? One, two, three, four, five, six. So width six, 606 and height 606. And there we go. The squares now fit perfectly into my grid. So this is looking good. If I want to see grid, um, sorry, square with ID three, it's that one. Four is there, five is there, six is there, seven, eight, nine. It's literally snaking around. Perfect. Let's carry on. Okay, now I also want, I'm gonna go ahead and make the mole. For the moment, I'm just gonna give it a background color of blue, but obviously we wanna switch this out later. So we actually probably want like a mole image. I'll show you how to do that. But for now, I'm just gonna have the class of mole to be blue. So for example, if I add the class of mole here and refresh, you will see that the third square has a class of mole, so that square has turned blue. We can even see it when we inspect the elements. So that's great. Let's just pretend that's our mole for now until we get an image to put there. Next up, let's do some logic. So let's move on to our app.js file. Okay, so actually I'm just gonna remove the mole class from here because we're gonna add it with our JavaScript. So the first thing I want to do is actually select all the squares so we can work with them in our JavaScript file. So I'm going to do that by using the document query selector. So I'm not making this up. Document query selector all. So that's a JavaScript method that will essentially help us look for anything with the class name. So dot of square. We're going to search for all those and we're going to store it as squares. S squares. Okay, so we're finding all the squares and we're storing them under squares. Now, even though we don't have it because I removed it, I'm actually also going to store the mole. So I'm going to go document query selector, not all because there's only going to be one mole at any time. And I'm going to search for the class of mole. So now we have our squares, we can work with them. And then now we have our mole, if it's on the page that we can work with. Okay, we have two more things to pick out so we can do them later. And that is the element with the ID of time left. So once again, document, I could use query selector, or I could use uh, get element by ID. But just so you know, in query selector, if we're searching for an element with an ID, we need to use hash and then the name. So this is like an ID. We're searching for an element with an ID of time left. And let's store this as time left. And then finally, one more thing, and that's the score. 
So this thing right here, we need to get this element so that we can manipulate this with our JavaScript. So once again, I would get document query selector and then look for the ID of score. And let's save this as score. Or maybe, yeah, let's just save as score, that's fine. Great. So let's start off with the result as zero. Even though we've hard coded it, we need to tell our JavaScript that the result that we start with is zero. And we'll do the time a little bit later. Um, let's actually focus on getting the uh, game to work. So I'm going to write a function called random square. So we want to get a random square to put our model. Now, in here, for each square, so I'm going to grab all the squares and using the JavaScript method of for each, so that is a JavaScript method, I am going to get the class name. So I could put I here, I could put whatever we want, I could put square. So we could actually use square, maybe that makes more sense. So for each square in our squares array, I essentially want to get the square and I want to go class list. So that is the JavaScript property. And I want to remove the mole if he exists on any of the squares. So we have a fresh slate to start with. So that is what is happening here. I'm going getting each square and for each of the squares, I'm removing the class of mole. So that's the first step that we want to do in our function before we start adding a mole randomly. So I'm going to write let random position and then I'm going to use, so once again, I'm going to go into my squares array and I am going to pass through. So if I pass through a zero into my squares array, it would literally get me that first square. If I pass a one, well then I'm talking to the second square in my array. I need to pass through a random number in here, okay? I want to pass through a random number from uh, essentially uh, zero to eight, because I want a random index from zero to eight because there's nine squares and we start counting from zero. So I'm gonna do this by passing through the JavaScript method of math random like this, and then multiplying it by nine. But I'm also gonna use math floor to round whatever that number is down. So for example, if I console, so now if I console log random position and look in here, uh, I need to actually call that function to random square. And then position before initialization. Okay, that's because I console logged it up here. Whoops. There we go. And refresh. I'm going to get literally a random square each time, each time with an ID from one to nine. Okay. There we go. So that is it. That's what is happening here. If I actually console logged just this. You will see that once again, I am getting a random number from essentially zero to eight. Let's check that. Math random, my trusty MDN. Okay, math random returns a function for floating point in the range from zero to less than one. Okay, so in this case, it's we multiplied it by nine, so zero to less than nine. So that is exactly what numbers we're getting back and we're rounding it down. So that's what we're doing. See, no matter how many times I refresh this, we'll never get anything above eight because we're rounding down, okay? So eight's gonna be the highest and that makes sense because zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We only go up to the eighth index. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, have a read of this from MDN if you're not sure and have a play around with it, but that's exactly what we are doing 
here. Great. So I'm just going to get rid of this for now. Okay. Now, whatever random position, we should probably have random square. I'm going to have random square because essentially what we're getting back is a random square as we saw by the first console log. So for whatever random square we have, I'm going to use class list add mole class. So once again, we should now get a boost square in a random position. So that's our mole. Every time you refresh the page, putting itself in a random square. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's carry on. So I'm happy with that, but I actually want to put this on a timer. So I want this to be on a timer. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is... Instead of just having the function like this, I'm going to write this in another function so we can attach it to a button if we wish. Uh, move mole. And then I'm going to put let timer ID equal null because we need to actually stop this timer interval from moving. And I'm going to use the JavaScript method of set interval to move the mole. So I'm just going to put random square to generate a random square. And let's say every 500 milliseconds. So this is a, so now I don't need this here and nothing will happen if I refresh the page. However, if we invoke the function or call the function, which is why I want to do this in a function because you now have the option to attach this to a button if you wish, right? Because if I do this now, it will just start on the page load. See, we are getting, I'm not doing anything. We are getting a random square light up with a mole every 500 milliseconds. So that's some extra work for you if you want it. At the moment, I'm just calling the function on the page load, but you can attach it to a button if you wish. So that's working. Um, it is essentially on a timer and we can use this timer, which is why I've done it like this. I could have just done that. But because it's on a timer, we can actually use this timer to stop our mole again in our button if we wish. So that's that's optional for you. That's why I've put it there. Um, cool. So the next thing I want to do is actually listen out for if we hit the mole because we want to get a point each time we hit the mole. So I'm going to do this up here. And now I'm going to grab the squares and for each square, um, for each ID in the square, I am going to get the ID and use add of, again, this could just be square. So let's just maybe put this for square, it makes more sense for each square in our squares array. I'm going to add an event listener to listen out if we, put mouse down. So each time we click on the square and then I'm just going to put a function here. So I'm passing through the event and then a function of what's to happen if I click the square. And if the square ID equals the square, that is the random square, so let's actually save that. Um, I'm actually going to put, so we want to save something. I'm going to put hit position and then I'm going to get the random squares ID. So I'm literally getting the ID of the square. So I'm getting this thing right here and that's how we can do it. So I'm getting the ID of the random square and I'm saving it to hit position. So perhaps I'm just going to put let hit position, leave it as blank. If the square ID equals whatever the hit position is at that point in time, then I want to get the result and add one to the result. Cool. I also want to display it in our score. So score, uh, let's do text content or in a HTML, whatever you want, equals the result. Okay, and then I also want to make the hit position 
whoops, so clear out, hit position equals null again. Okay, cool. If I can just spell that right, hit position. So this is looking good. So amazing. So that's what happens if we hit a mole. Let's see if that has worked. Now we've got that working. We are adding a score each time we hit it. The last thing we need to do is actually get our timer to stop working. So let's do that. I'm gonna do that um, below here and then slow it down so we can see it a bit because it's way too fast. So I'm gonna write a new function called countdown. And then in here, so in my function, uh, well, with each time we invoke this, so I'm gonna put this, um, once again, because I'm not attaching it to anything, I could just put set interval. So I'm just gonna put this down here and call this let um, count down timer ID. So we can stop it if we want equal set interval and then I'm going to put this on a set interval so I'm literally going to pass through the countdown function and I want the countdown and function to invoke every 1000 milliseconds so it would be like one second two seconds three seconds and each time I want something to happen and with that I want to get the current time so let's actually write um let current time equals 60. So I want to get the current time and I just want to minus one from it and then I actually want to display that. I want to display that in the time left. So time left text content current time. Okay so that's really it. Uh, if, however, current time equals zero, so like we get to the end, I want to clear the timer, so clear interval, count down timer ID, okay? So I wanna clear this and then maybe let's get an alert that says, Game over your final score is and then the result. So that is looking good. Let's have a go. So to make this a little bit faster, I'm just going to change this to 10. Let's see how we do in 10 seconds. So zero. You can see the time is working. We're clicking, we're clicking on the um, mole, we're getting points. And then as soon as we get to zero, game over, your final score is nine. We can do with a space there. And that looks good. Awesome. You can see this is still moving around. We can actually stop that thanks to this timer ID. So I'm just going to move this out so it's global. And we can use it here. So we also want a clear interval timer ID. So let's try that now. Once again, it's click, 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 click. Got a score of five, got a score of, okay. Game over, you'll find some scores five, zero, and it stops moving. So there we have it. We have now built our game of whack-a-mole. Um, if you are interested in how to get an image, let me show you that very quickly. So I'm just going to use uh, this whack-a-mole from my GitHub. Feel free to take him. I've already pre-made him to be 200 by 200 pixels. So let's just download that. I'm going to save image and let's save him as short mole. That sounds good in downloads. And then I'm simply just going to very basically drag him and put him in here. So there he is. And then in my style sheet, instead of having background color blue, 
I'm gonna have background image and then I'm gonna put uh, URL and then the path to my mole. So it's in the root, so I just put draw mole JPEG, JPEG, because it's a JPEG. And then I'm gonna put background size cover. So let's have a look at that. And there we go. We have our little mole moving around. So, oops, game over, find score is three. Let's fix that space. Okay, score is, put a space there. And let's make it move faster. So let's get a random square, it'll be 500 milliseconds again. And let's change the current time to start with 60. Seconds, so once again, boom, boom. This is more realistic. You can of course add levels. You can make them go as fast as you want. Like this is really fast. <laughs> you will see the score adding and you'll see the time left. So that is it. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on how to make whack-a-mole without canvas uh, and practice your timer skills. Thanks very much for watching and I will see you soon. In this game, we are gonna be building 2D Breakout, another retro game. The aim of this game is to break all the blocks that you see in order to complete the game. And of course, once we are finished doing this, giving you the bare minimal logic and code in order to get this game working, I would love for you to take this game, style it up, give it extra levels, and share it with us on Twitter. I can't wait to see what you built. Okay, so let's get to it. The first thing that I want to show you is my setup for the game. So as always, I've created an index HTML file with some boilerplate. So I've simply given our project a title. I've linked our style sheet. So this style CSS file to the HTML file, making sure that the path is correct. So as this file is in my root or the root of the project, that is fine. And I've also chosen to put a script tag at the bottom of my body. Now make sure to make the path uh, correct as well. So index.js is fine as the index.js file is in the root of my project. Okay, so I've chosen to do it this way. You can also choose to use a DOM content loader on your JavaScript page, as long as the JavaScript is after any HTML elements, you should be fine. Okay, so that is it. These files don't have anything in them yet. The first thing I wanna do is actually make my grid. So I'm gonna do this by simply putting a div here with the class of grid, so like that, which I'm now gonna style up in my style CSS file. So I am picking out the class of grid and I am telling my CSS file to class by using this dot. So let's make our grid, I don't know, 600 pixels and a height of 300 pixels. And I'm just gonna give it a border of solid black, one pixel so we can see it. So go over here, copy the path. And then in here, just gonna paste the link and there we go. There's our grid. It's gonna inspect the page so we can see our console log up too. Okay, now the next thing I wanna do is actually use our JavaScript to start putting in the blocks. So essentially what I wanna do, so instead of literally hard coding it in the HTML like this, so let's just make a block for now. I'm gonna go a class of blocks. So once again, let's pick out the class block. And I'm gonna give it a width of 100 pixels and a height of 20 pixels and a background color of a blue. So now if we go back here, refresh, there's our block. Now it is important that because I wanna be making loads and loads of these blocks, and I'm also gonna to wanna to know the position of each block, as well as the, uh, I guess, positioning of all of these corners. I'm gonna make my, uh, I guess, identifier, or how we're gonna be moving the block, this 
bottom left corner. Okay, so what I mean by this is I essentially, I'm just gonna give this a position absolute, not relative, but absolute, so that we can move things around. We need this here uh, in order to use the left property. So not on here, I wanna use it on the block. So I'm essentially using my JavaScript, gonna be adding left margin and bottom margin to all the blocks to position them. So what I mean by this is if I just go left 50 pixels, refresh, I've moved the block left 50 pixels from this point right here, okay? Well, essentially from this, but I want to make this the sort of anchor point of our block. So I'm gonna be using left and bottom to do so. So once again, I'll just put 50 pixels so you can see. And there you go. You will see that the bottom margin and the left margin are the same from this anchor point right here. That is now, from now on, our anchor point of each block. That's important. That's what we are gonna be. We're gonna be adding left and bottom, but using our JavaScript. So just get rid of that for now. So, We've done it. We have created a block, but we want to do it in JavaScript and we want to make 15 of these blocks, okay? We'll make 15 of these. So first off, let's start by making one, right? So to do this, I would use, let's store this as block, so const block, and I'm just gonna use document and create element. So there's a JavaScript method that I can use to create an element and I want to create a div. So we've created a div, we've stored it as a block. Next, I wanna give my block the class list that I have already made a block. So without the dot each time, this time, I'm gonna add the class of block to my newly created div that I have called block. And the last thing I wanna do is actually grab the grid. So, whoops, grid. So I want to grab this grid. I'm actually going to delete this now. Don't need it. I can grab this grid by essentially getting, so once again, documents. I'm going into the document and I'm going to use query selector to look for the class of grid. So I am telling it I'm looking for the class of grid. I have to tell query selectors, query selector can look for IDs and all sorts of things. So I'm telling it I want to find the class of grid. I want to store this element as, let's say, grid. So now that we have our grid, I'm going to use a JavaScript method called append child. So I'm not making up that exists to put in our newly created block with the style of block. Okay, so let's go check it out. And there we go. We've done that with JavaScript, okay? We've deleted the one we hard-coded and we've added that with JavaScript. So that is pretty cool. But I need 15 of these. So I need 15 of these and for each one of these, so I'm gonna use grid style. And as we said, I'm gonna use left. So let's just say for now, I'm just gonna put, hmm, as you know, 100 pixels, just to show you that it's working, and grid style, bottom, 50 pixels. Okay, so fresh, oops, not grid, we move the grid, I wanna move the block. Whoopsie daisy, refresh, okay? Great, so we've now moved the block Bottom 50, left 100. Oops. Cool. So I'm just gonna put this in a function. Let's say, draw my block function, add block. I'm just gonna put all this in here. Function add block. Okay, so add block. We go, save that. Okay, now refresh, there we go. So now only when we call this function, we will create a block. 
But like I said, we want 15 of these and I want all of these to be different for each one. So to do this, I'm gonna create a class, a block class. So create block individual. And I'm gonna use class for this. So class block, let's tell how far we wanna deal with a class. And then for this, I need a constructor. So once again, as we discussed in an X and Y axis, so X axis, Y axis, and this is gonna be the bottom left of our block. And using this bottom uh, left X and Y axis, I can essentially decipher all four points of my block and where they are on our grid. And I'm gonna do this using the width of the block. So let's save that const width, block width. And we know this is 100 and the height, which is 20. So 100 and const block height, which is 20. So now using the x, y axis, let's get all, so this bottom left, well, we know that the bottom left is just the generic x and y axis. So I'm just gonna put x axis, y axis. So whatever we pass through into our block constructor, that's gonna be the bottom left of our block. Then let's do bottom right, this bottom right. Oops. And I'm gonna pass through. So to get the bottom right, the x axis is, we're gonna to have to add to the x axis. The y axis is going to keep the same. So, yeah, bottom right, x axis, move it over 100 pixels, y axis, the same. Okay, yeah, that's right, cool. Now we need to get the top left. And the top left is going to be the x axis, and then the y axis, we need to add the height, block height. And finally, this top right, and the top right is gonna be the exact like opposite as in, um, you know, the other corner completely. So we're just gonna get the X axis and add the block width and the Y axis and add the block height. So hopefully that makes sense. We essentially wanna find out where each point, each of the four points of our block is on our grid at any given moment in time. And we can decipher all of those from the bottom left X and Y axis. Okay, so that's how we're gonna be creating all 15 of our blocks by passing through two values. Great. So now let's actually make an array of these blocks. So const blocks, this is gonna be all my blocks constant blocks and then I'm going to create a new block and I'm going to pass through well I guess on the first one I just want to make one here so again we need to add a left so let's just add a left margin of 10 and because this is 300 pixels I don't know let's just put in 270 and see what that looks like so 10 to 70 so let's just try with this one first uh, draw all my blocks instead of add block I want this to draw all of my blocks so well we need to make function add blocks plural let's change that and we need a for loop so for let i equal zero as long as i is smaller than the blocks array length so at the moment it's just one in there but for the future, we implement i increment of i by one. Okay, now as long as we want to loop over our blocks array and keep creating these blocks, so we want to essentially get all of this code and put it back in here. Okay, so create a block, add the class of block, then we want to get the block left, and instead of just hard coding something. Well, we want to go into the block. So we can go into the blocks array. And then get the our first item. So just I is fine because we're going to be looping. We're going to get that first items. 
I'm gonna style it so we wanna get its X axis from the bottom left, okay? Because we're gonna be working with this. So we wanna get the X axis and assign it to the left. So bottom left and the first item, so we do it like that. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, let's just look at this again. So we know that we need to give our block styling from the left. So we want that to be essentially this. So that's the styling we wanna give from the left. So, and I just use this as the sort of uh, anchor point. So I just want this value right here, okay? So I can do that by going into the bottom left and grabbing the X axis. That will give me 10, because that's how this works. By creating a new block, I'm passing through a 10 to be the X axis, I'm passing through 270 to be the Y axis, and then I'm getting all the other values. So maybe it's worth me console logging this. Console log blocks, and let's just get the first item, so this. Refresh, cannot, okay, let's just, I'm just gonna comment this out now because it's throwing errors for us. Okay, so that is my newly created block. I pass through a 10, I pass through 270, and from it, we get all four points that will create our block. So the X and Y axis of all of them. Okay, I hope that makes sense. We have generated all of these just from passing through two parameters. So now we know where each block is and all four of its points, and we're gonna use that for collisions. So we've created one block, but we wanna create loads of blocks. So first off, let's go back to this function. We wanna add the styling of 10 pixels. So we need the px to the left and we want to add, so once again, let's use our anchor. So I'm going to go into the block, first block. So I'm going to go, sorry, I'm going into the blocks array. I'm grabbing our first block and then I'm using the anchor. So I'm going to use the bottom left corner to get the second value, so the Y axis, which we know is 270. And then I'm going to just assign to pixels. And then we're going to put that in our grid. So let's refresh. Cannot read property zero of undefined. Ah, I just misspelled bottom left. Refresh. And there we go. We've drawn our first block. Now let's go to drawing the others. So we just have to now create blocks. This is so what's so good about creating classes. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so we've got our first block. Oh, I need to put commas. That's oh, fine. I'm just gonna D, 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 D. I'm just pressing Command D to do this. And I'm just gonna go like that. There we go. So now our second block, well, let's put that in position. Let's add 110 pixels to the left so the x-axis to move it along left for this one let's add a, another 110 to that so 230 another so 340 and then another so 350 um i think fine should be five should be okay let's see what that looks like and obviously we're looping over so as many as we add we will create and that looks great Let's maybe chop off the grid a bit. Hold on, it's too big. So let's make it five, seventy. Okay, maybe five, sixty. Okay, done it. Okay, so we've got one row. I want three rows. So I'm just essentially gonna Maybe I should just use one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Let's delete these. I'm gonna use these. And instead now I'm gonna move the Y axis. So instead of 270, I'm gonna have 240. So I want it closer to the bottom. Two from two. 
240. And then the final, let's see how it looks actually first. That looks good. And then once again here, I'm happy with those. So I'm just gonna copy. I'm happy with the X axis for each. With these, I wanna move closer by 30 each. So once again, command D, command D, command D. 10, oops, not that one though. And amazing. We have created all of our blocks. Pretty cool. So now we've done that. I'm pretty happy with this. We've drawn out our blocks. Let's get to creating a user. So just like we did before, add user. I'm going to, let's store it as user. I'm gonna get my document. I'm gonna create element, I wanna create a div. Now user, I wanna style class list add, and I need to make a, essentially I just wanna make it the same as a block. I'm just gonna call it user, and maybe make it purple, just so we can see the difference. So this time I'm gonna add the class of user, and once again, I'm gonna get the grid, I'm gonna use append child to put in our user. So our user will appear there, but we sort of want to move it here, right? So we want to move it in this row and down here. So what, like just like we did here, um, I can do that. I would get the user, use style left, and then, well, let's give it a position. Can't start position, or oh, actually let's call it user starts. We don't know what other starts we want. And then let's make it start. We want to make it start in the same X axis as the middle one, so 230. And let's just say 10 pixels from the bottom. So we've got our user start. That's where our user's always going to start. But then we also need a current position. Okay, let's just do it. Yeah. So we have a user start from where you always start no matter what, no matter how many times you refresh. But then because we wanna move our user left and right, we're gonna to have to track that. So I'm gonna have a let current position as this will change, so it needs to be a let. And to start off, I'm just gonna assign that to the user start. So I hope that makes sense. Um, it will in a bit. We've got a starting position. Then I'm assigning that starting position to the current position of our user because that will always change, but we want it to be that to start. So we've got our current position and the X and Y axis. Now, just like we did here, I'm gonna get the current position and I'm gonna get the X axis from it. So the first value and just use pixels. And let's do that for the style bottom two of the user. So go into the current position, get the second value and add pixels. Cool. So now if we refresh, that's where our block, where our user block will show up. Okay, so we've done that. Now let's go to moving our user left and right. So I'm gonna do this. So we've added our user, move user. Okay, to move our user, we're gonna have to use keys. So I'm actually gonna write a function called move user and pass through an event. And then I'm gonna use the switch case to listen out for keys. Okay, and I'm gonna use a switch case for this because we're simply gonna be listening out for uh, our left or our right. And we can use a switch case for this. Um, so this is how you write a switch uh, case. You would pass in through something here and if it equals the case, then you execute the code and then you break out of it. So if you haven't looked at switch cases, please do, but this is what we're gonna be using. So I don't know how many of you know about keys on your keyboard, but essentially, oops. If what I'm writing here, so case arrow left, if, so I'm passing through the event and the event, if I part, if I literally click a key on my keyboard and the value assigned to that key has the value of arrow left, 
then I essentially want to move my current position, right? So if I press arrow left, I want to take away from the X axis of our current position. So I would do so by grabbing the current position and this, the X axis, so the first uh, item from that array, and I'm just gonna minus 10 to the value. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. And then once again, I'm going to reassign value. Okay, so actually I'm gonna be using this a lot. So I'm gonna put this in its own function. I'm gonna call it draw user function. I'm just gonna do this to avoid repetition, draw user. I'm literally just gonna take this code out and replace this with the function draw user to make our code cleaner. So now instead of drawing the user again here by literally writing out that code again, I'm just gonna put draw user. So we're gonna move the X axis position and we're gonna redraw the user. So that is what we're gonna do. And then we're gonna break. So let's check that out. First off, we need to attach this. So let's grab the document again and use a JavaScript method called add event listener to listen out. So I'm not making this up. Key down is an event that we can listen out for. So we're listening out to any time I press any key on my keyboard. That's what key, da key down does. You can have key up as well, but I think key down makes more sense than listening out for when you take your finger off a key. And then I'm gonna put move user, so the function. So anytime I press a key down on the keyboard, we're gonna listen out, we're gonna invoke this function and then see if the key is arrow left and if it is, we're gonna move the X axis of our current position 10. So let's do this. I'm pressing left. There it goes, left. It's moving 10 pixels, awesome. But it also goes off. So that's a problem. Let's fix that. We're gonna fix this with an if statement. So case arrow left. I'm just gonna write if, as long as the current position, so the X axis of our user is larger than zero. So as long as it's larger than zero, then we execute this code, okay? So that's all I'm writing. As long as our user, so this point right here, is larger than zero, because this is zero, then we can move left, otherwise we stop. We don't execute the function anymore, so it appears like we are stopping. So that's what I have done with that. Let's now do the same. So there we go. For the case of if we press arrow right. So it's essentially the opposite. If current position x axis is smaller than the board width, have we declared what the board width is? No. Const board width equals 560. 560. So as long as we're smaller than that, we wanna get the current position and let's just add Oops, add 10 this time. And then we have to redraw the user, right? Because it's got a new position. We need to redraw the user. And we break out of this. So now let's see. Ah, it's not stopping. Ah, but it stops there. This is because this is our anchor point, remember? So we're going to have to minus the width of the block. So minus block width. So now, once again, stop. Nice. Stop. This is looking good. I like it. Let's carry on. 
So we are moving our user, that is good. I think the next thing we wanna do is create a ball. So add ball. Once again, let's create a ball. Let's use document, create element to create a div. Now let's get the ball and use class list add and then a class of ball, which we have not yet written. Let's do it now, ball. Uh, let's make it width 20 pixels, height 20 pixels. Border radius to make it look like a circle, 10 pixels. Background color. Red. And we also need to give it a position absolute, as with everything, if you wanna start assigning it left and bottom uh, values. So we've created the ball, we've styled the ball. Now we need to grab our grid and use a pen child, child to put the ball in it. So we'll put it, this is the parent, we are putting the ball inside the parent, that's why it says append child. And there's our ball. Just as with the uh, user, let's give it a start position. So const ball start this time. Ball start equals, and then, uh, I guess, let's just make it a little bit higher. Let's see how that looks. Ball start and then let ball current position equal ball start. Save that. And then I'm just gonna grab the ball and use style left to use the, what is it, current, Ball current position, ball current position. First value plus the string of pixel and ball style right. And then we want to get the second value. So let's see what that looks like. Oh no, it's, I don't want it there. Right. Oops, that's going to be bottom. Because we're assigned from the left and the bottom. Okay, just going to move it over a little bit so it looks more central. So I'm just going to change this to, I don't know, semi. Okay, so that looks good. Okay. So we've added our ball. Just like with the draw user, I'm gonna do the same for the ball. So draw the ball function, draw ball. And then grab the ball. Actually, I'm just gonna, once again, I mean, it's just neater for me to reuse this function as we're gonna be using it a bit. So that's our function now, I've just, Essentially taken it, and there we go. So I've drawn the ball. Next up, I wanna work on moving the ball. So move the ball, move, move, move ball. For this, I'm gonna write a function. I'm gonna call it function, if I can just spell it right, function move ball. Okay. So we essentially want our ball to uh, move by adding an X and Y axis. So let's just say we wanna make it move uh, like, like left and right. So it looks as if it's going to the top uh, right corner of our grid. I would do so by getting the ball current position, X axis and adding two. And I will do the same for the Y axis. So that will essentially move our ball. And then of course I would have to redraw it 
draw four. Okay, so now let's actually put this on a interval. So to do this, I would put set interval and I'm gonna pass through the move ball function and let's say invoke it every 30 milliseconds. So now, whoosh, there it goes. Awesome. But it's going off the grid, it's going through the blocks. We need to next tackle all of this stuff. So let's tackle it not going through the grid. So when it hits the walls of the grid, I want it to change direction. So let's do that first. So first off, I'm actually gonna put this on a timer ID, which I'm gonna declare at the top. I'm just gonna leave it blank. And we're gonna to have to clear this timer ID when we want the ball to stop. So I wanna stop this interval by running by getting that timer ID and passing it through clear interval. So we've put that on a timer. The next thing I wanna do is only make the, when I wanna change the direction of a ball if it uh, hits a wall. So let's write a function called, I'm gonna check the collisions. Now let's actually write the function. So function check for collisions. Okay, so first off, let's check for wall collisions. As I said, collisions. And I could do this by basically saying that if ball current position x axis is smaller than, sorry, is larger than or equal to the board width, once so again, minus. We need to account for the ball width itself. So let's just put ball diameter as the ball width and ball height are gonna be the same. So ball diameter, const ball diameter equals 20 because we know that because that's the width and height we gave it. So if ball current position is larger than or equal to the board width minus the ball diameter. So if it's larger, then we know it's off the grid and we need to change direction. So change direction. We need to write a function for this. Change direction. So I'm just gonna write that function now. Function change, oops change direction. Okay, so currently we know that uh, our ball is moving plus two uh, and plus two x and y. So we need to sort of change this. So I'm going to go back here and instead of just adding a two and adding a two here, this is gonna be the x direction and this is gonna be the y direction. And let's store this as variables. Let x direction equal to, let y direction equal to. And we're gonna change these values. So, if x direction on collision deeply equals two, and the y direction on collision. So both of these currently are two and two, and they're moving two and two, so that essentially the ball is moving to the top right corner of our grid. We wanna change the direction. And we wanna change it, so imagine it's going like this, we wanna change it to move like that, right? Because that makes sense in like physics. So I would simply just get the y direction and change it to minus two and then return out of this. Okay. So we've done it as if it was moving to the wall. Let's actually write an if statement for if it's the top wall so we can see if this works. Mm. Uh, we're also not invoking the check collisions function in which the change direction, if 
function is in. So where should we move, where should we put this? I think we want to put it in the interval. So after we draw the ball, every time we draw a ball, so every 30 milliseconds we want to check for a collision. So still we won't be able to test that. Let's write a rule for, um, well actually we might. Okay, so let's test this out. And there we go. And okay, so it's changing direction. Um, it's hard to see because it's actually going through the top wall, but it's hitting as soon as it hits this axis right here is changing direction. I'm actually going to maybe move the grid so we can see a little bit better. Let's just give it a margin top of, I don't know, 80 pixels. Refresh. And then once the red ball hits this wall right here, it will change direction. I don't really think that's the direction it should be changing. I think we should change. Okay, so if it hits that wall, I essentially want to change. Just make this an equal. It's going that way. So plus two, plus two. And then I want to change the X. Let's see how that looks. It's going there. And then I want it to go. Okay, I think that looks better. Let's actually get to working on this stopping at the top wall now. So if the ball current position is larger than the ball width minus the ball diameter, change direction, or if the ball current position y axis, so let's go for the second value, maybe let's, I'm just going to space this out so it's easier for us to read. Is larger suddenly or equal than the board height this time, minus the ball diameter, change direction. Oops, undefined board height is not defined. Did I not define that? Guess not. Const board height equals 300. We know that from our style sheet. Okay. So now, but it's also changing the, okay, let's just account for everything because at the moment, everything is essentially gonna go one way. So if, so if we hit that wall, we wanna change the X direction. So now if X direction equals minus two, because that's what it is, and Y direction equals two, because that's what's happening at the moment. I want x direction to change back to two and return out this. So once again, that actually needs to go in here. So now let's see what happens when we hit the top wall. Ah, okay. If x direction equals two, actually let's keep this as y and we return out of this. If x direction is two and y direction is minus two, x direction is changed to minus two. If x direction so I'm just thinking about how it now equals minus two and y direction equals, we both equal minus two, then let's just put y direction 
equals two and then return out of this and then we've just account for one more if x direction equals minus two and y direction equals two let's just make it more exact just in case so deeply equals for all of them x direction equals two and return out of it so i think we've now accounted for all of them let's see how that looks all the combinations so hit the top wall bam bam Pfft. awesome we'll see that won't happen and it goes to the bottom so let's actually write rules for the other two now so we also know that if The ball current position x axis is going to be smaller than or equal to zero. So if it goes off the left hand side of the board, then we want to change the direction before that happens. And then check for game over. So if ball, oops, ball current position y-axis this time is smaller than or equal to zero, so if it goes off the bottom of the board, we want to clear interval timer ID. So we want to stop it. And let's also get like a console log out. Or actually, let's just put it in the display. So let's get a div. Let's give it the ID of score. I'm just gonna hard code zero for now. Let's pick it out. Um, so const score display equals document query select ooh, query selector, and then let's look for the score, but the ID of score. Okay, so let's actually show. So let's get the score display and in that HTML, I'm just gonna put, yeah, this. Okay. Mm. I'm also gonna get rid of the event listener so we can't move the user anymore, remove event listener, key down, move user, so we can't move the user. So now it's gonna hit the top wall, it's gonna change direction, change directions again, and when it hits the bottom, boom, you lose, and it stops, and we can't move our little user, so the purple user, anymore. Cool. Let's change the direction to check if it's going through the left side. So I'm just gonna do this by putting, I think, minus two and, that, okay, that one. So go da, 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 hit the top wall, change direction, and boom. Everything looks like it's working. This is looking great. Now, time for the tough part. I'm gonna check for collisions for any of the blocks. So let's do it. Okay, so in our check for collisions function, I am gonna, let's just do it up here. Check for block collisions. And I'm gonna have to use a for loop for this. So for let i equals zero, and as long as i is smaller than the block's length, we increment i like so. Okay, now I'm gonna have to essentially check if the ball 
is in between the blocks uh, bottom left x-axis and bottom right x-axis, so the bottom width, and also in the height, okay? So if any, if it's in there, if it's in there, we know it's a collision, right? So we need to write this and we need to loop it over for every block. So I would do so if, I need to do it with an if statement. So if, it's gonna be a long one. So we're gonna go into our, actually let's use the, okay, I'm just gonna use the ball current position. Let's check the x-axis first. So if the ball's x-axis is larger than the block, so I'm gonna go into the first block and check the bottom left, just cause that's our anchor x-axis so if it's larger than the bottom left x-axis but smaller than the bottom right x-axis we know it's in the middle of the block so if it's larger than that and ball current position x-axis so the first value is smaller than i'm just going to get rid of this so you can see the javascript is smaller than so into the blocks the first block Use bottom right x-axis. Okay, so all of, all of that is true. That statement is true. And now let's do the y-axis, the ball current position. Y-axis. And let's account for the ball diameter. So maybe let's put that in brace curl, uh, parenthesis two. So if now the Y position is smaller than the blocks, we're going into the blocks again, and we're gonna use I, and then we're gonna get the bottom left y-axis and the ball current position y-axis is smaller than whatever block we're looking at top left y-axis so if all of this is true all of these statements are true then we know that we are in our ball is in a block, it's in the area of a block. Okay, so if all of that is true, well, what do we want to happen? Well, I guess I want to remove the block. Um, to do this, I need to remove the class of the block we've just hit. So we need to grab all the blocks from our document, grab all blocks. So I'm going to go into the document and use query selector all to grab anything with the class of block. And let's make this an array by using the JavaScript method of array from. So I'm going to put that like so. So now, so I'm just going to console log this to see what all blocks look like. Okay, so we're fresh and we collide with any block. One of undefined. Great, what have we done wrong? Uh, top left needs to be capital L. Okay. So now when we collide with a block, bam, we get all the divs of the class of block in an array. You can see it's an array because of the um, square brackets. So that's what the all blocks looks like that we've just console logged. So we're gonna get all the blocks and now all blocks we're going to go into that array of blocks wherever i is because we're looping so whatever block we're dealing with and we're gonna use class list to remove the class of block so visually we won't see the block anymore it will still be there though so we need to do get rid of that too so we need to get rid of it essentially from this array as well we need to get rid of whatever block we are dealing with and remove it from this array 
So removing the class is completely different to removing it from the other array that we have it in. So I've used splice to essentially get rid of whatever the index is. So I, and we do it like so. So just remove the one item. So whatever, say, say we hit the block with index two, we then need to remove it from our blocks array by using splice and passing through a two into here. So we remove it. So once we removed it, we also need to change direction. Cool. Okay. So let's see if that's worked. Boom, boom. And it's changing. Nice. And then you lose. Okay, so this is looking good. I think maybe let's also add a score. So score plus plus and then score display in a HTML, whatever the score is, and let's set score at the top. So let score start with zero, just so we can keep track of how many we are hitting. Okay, so the next thing we've to do in collision, so we've accounted for collisions in here. Um, we also need to check for user collisions, right? So if a little paddle hits it. So I'm going to do that in here. Check for user collisions. And now if, so once again, if full current position X axis is larger than the current position of our user's x-axis. So if that's true and the ball current position x-axis is smaller than the current position uh, x-axis plus the block width. So we are essentially checking if the ball is in between uh, the two sides of our user and whatever it is, its current position. So if that is true, maybe let's put this in its own. Okay, so if that is true and the ball cut, well, we could just do it by, no, let's just make it for the whole. I was going to say we could just do it if it hits the top of our user, but let's just do it properly. If the ball current position y axis is larger than the current position y axis and the ball current and the ball current position y axis is smaller than the current position of our user y axis plus the block height. So if the two are in the same space, we then also want to change direction. So check it out. So now I'm moving, it's gonna hit, boom, boom. Boom, boom. 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 This is looking fun, boom, boom, boom. And we're adding to the score. Everything is looking great. I think we only have one last thing to do. Obviously, this is uh, just a very basic, simple game. If you want to be super precise, like you can see sometimes the ball is passing through a block a little bit. I think this one might pass. No, it didn't hit it. Uh, then please do fiddle around with the if statements. Okay. Now we have one last thing to do and that's check for a win. So I'm gonna do that here. So we've just added to the score, check for win. If the, I guess we're gonna check the length of the blocks length. So blocks length Deeply equals zero. 
Well, we're going to get the score, display, use inner HTML to display, you win. And once again, we're going to stop the game. So clear interval, timer ID. And once again, we're going to get the document and stop our little guy from moving. So key down, move using. Okay, great. And there we go. Let's just see if it wins. Now, please do expand on this game. You can add a button that will essentially start the game. That would be quite cool. So the game just doesn't start on its own when we load the browser. Um, I would definitely do that and it shouldn't be too difficult. You just uh, put in the functions to move the ball in that and perhaps as well the user. And then once you press the button, the game should start. So I'm just gonna wait for this. I just wanna check that we get a message that we win all of them. And then I'm gonna show you how to deploy it onto the internet. So just bear with me while I win this game. You can also mess around with the score. So for example, if you pass one level, you could increase the uh, speed of the ball. I'll show you how to do that in a second. Um, that could be quite fun. You can also make your paddle smaller. There's so much, there's so much you could do. So once again, poof, poof. come on, I'm just gonna hit one more. So hit that one and then see if I can do this one. And come on, yes, you win. Okay. So yeah, as I mentioned, you can make the game harder by essentially, I mean, if I move this, change this to 10, it will go super fast. Ah, so that's quite fun too. I'm just gonna move it back though because I think it's too fast for me. I don't like it. Okay. In this game, we are going to make something a little bit more complicated. We are gonna be building the retro game of Frogger. The aim in Frogger is to get to the other side of the pond and the road using floating logs and avoiding the cars. We are going to be building the bare basics of this game, leaving you to add styling and any other features at the end. By the end of this tutorial, you should be familiar with the following methods and properties. Okay, so let's get building. Okay, so let's do it. Let's build a Frogger game. So all I'm going to do is start off on WebStorm and I'm going to create a new project. This is going to be an empty project and I'm just going to call this Frogger and just click, click, create. So that is creating my project for me. At the moment, it's just an empty directory. So we need to go ahead and add a new file. That's right, it's going to be an HTML file, which I'm going to call index. So thank you, WebStorm. So if you're not using WebStorm, then please just go ahead and type out index.html. And here is some boilerplate code that has been generated for me. So I'm gonna put in the title Frogger. This is not gonna show up in the browser, okay? This is gonna show up in the tab. So if I just go ahead and open this up using this shortcut right here you will notice that Frogger is showing up here, okay? So that is what this title tag does. For those of you who do not have WebStorm, you can also uh, open this file by just copying the path to it. So copy the absolute path and then just simply paste it into your browser like so. So two options for you. I'm just gonna go ahead and inspect this page and get up our console logs as well. So, how are we going to make our game of Frogger? Well, if you watch my tutorials, I do usually like to add elements in here with JavaScript, but sometimes it's not worth it. Sometimes it's actually better just to uh, start making the game from the HTML file itself, and this is one of those occasions. So I'm gonna actually build the grid in HTML and then add functionality to the grid. And my game of Frogger is gonna be nine by nine squares. Okay, so this is what the game is gonna look like as a reminder again. And I'm gonna go ahead and create those 81 squares in the index.html file. So the reason I actually just want to do it in the index.html is just because each div has 
uh, is gonna have a different class. I'm essentially gonna draw out what I want the starting state of the grid to look like. So let's give the wrapping div the class of grid as that is gonna be our game board. And in here, I'm gonna actually start making my divs. So we're gonna have one div, two, three, four, and then this one, I'm gonna give it the class of ending block. So this is essentially where you wanna to get to that symbolize the end of the game. And then I'm just gonna have a few more of these. So 13 to be exact, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. And now it's going to get interesting. So now I'm going to get a div and this div essentially is going to symbolize uh, the, I guess, the row in our grid where all the logs are going left. So that's why I'm actually going to give it a class of log left. I'm going to copy that. I'm just going to paste this out. Oops nine times as it is a nine by nine square. So there's one whole entire row of logs going left and then one whole entire row of logs going right. So I'm gonna use control G and change these to log going right. Now, whilst we might wanna give them the same styling, we will know that they have different classes and we will know that we can uh, essentially know which direction the logs are gonna be going on these rows. Okay, so good. And now I'm just going to add a row of empty divs. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And now just like we did with the logs, we're gonna do the same for cars going left and cars going right. So obviously we have to look out for the cars. So I'm actually gonna take all of these again. And this time I'm just gonna replace log with car. So control C, control C. So control G, control G all the way down. So I'm selecting all of them and there we go. And let's do two more rows of divs. So there's nine divs and there's another nine divs. And now we're also gonna have to put the starting block in here. So I'm gonna do so from the fifth one, one, two, three, four, five. So just in here, and I'm gonna give this class starting block. Okay, so like I said, at the moment we won't see much, but that is what the styling is for. So let's go ahead and style it up. So all I'm gonna do is link up my style sheet using the link tag, which is a self-closing tag. And I'm gonna do rel style sheet type style type text CSS and the H reference for this. Well, I know that my style sheet is gonna live in the root of my project. So I'm just gonna type style CSS and I'm gonna create a file called styles CSS, which is gonna live on the root, which is why I've just literally typed out the name of my file like this. We don't need to go anywhere, it's just that file. Okay, so we've linked up the style sheet. Now let's add some styling. So the things we're gonna to have to start up, well, I'm actually going to style my grid to make sure that everything in it fits the way it should. So I can look for the class, dot is for class of grid. Let's make this maybe a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna say that my grid, I'm gonna give it a border of Y one pixel solid, uh, and we can make it black. Okay, so now if I look in here, it's just one line, okay? Because we haven't given it a height or a width. So what I'm gonna do is say that I want it to be 180 pixels height and 180 pixels width. So that is now gonna look like this. However, if we then give styling to all the divs, 
that live inside the grid. So this is how I can do, I can grab the element with the class of grid. So I'm literally looking in here, I'm like, oh, what well, has a class of grid? This does. And now I wanna say that every div that lives inside of it, so every div that lives inside of it, this is the syntax we're doing. So it's gonna have a height of, well, because I chose 180 here, 180 divided by nine is 20. So I'm gonna put 20 pixels and width 20 pixels. So that exactly nine divs fit in my square uh, along the width and the height. Okay, so that is all I have done. So now if you look in here, and I can actually look at the elements that make up this page. So there's my body, there's the div with the class of grid, and inside you will see all the divs. You will see each div is 20 by 20. Woo! However, they go all the way down. We don't want this, we want them to fit inside the square, right? So I'm gonna do so easily by adding display flex. Now you think that would work, but all display flex does is make sure that all the divs fit. However, just fit on the, uh, I guess as if you just squash them together in a box. So they're no longer 20 uh, uh, pixels wide, they're 2.25 pixels wide, because that's the only way we can fit 81 squares on here. So I'm gonna also add flex. Wrap, wrap, okay? So there we go. So now all the squares are fitting in here. They're essentially going like this, they're wrapping. So they're going starting from here and going, ooh, and then they're starting on this row going, ooh, and so on and so on and so on. You'll see as I highlight, you will see the uh, corresponding element being highlighted in the inspect tool on the right. So great. We've done that, now let's get to adding some more classes, some more styling to the classes, sorry. So let's first off start the ending block. So once again, I'm gonna grab the class name of ending block, and I'm just gonna actually give it a background color of, let's go ahead and give it red. So because we know this is the one, two, three, four, fifth square, where do you think it will be? I think it will be fifth, so somewhere here. And there it is, okay, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, and let's do the same for the starting block now. So starting block, and let's say the starting block is going to be blue. So all we've done is add a class to this block right here. Um, did we miss? It seems we need to add one more div because our divs stop there. So let's go ahead and add one more div. We seem to have missed one to the bottom, which actually means I wanna move this one to be here instead, because I want it to be the fifth from the end. And there we go. So we've added those, let's continue adding more styling. So let's pick out the log left this time. And I'm gonna say that log left and actually log right so we can do it this way um we could just give them all the same class but i'm going to choose to do it this way and i'm going to give them the background color of light blue so now that we know where that is it's here we've essentially made like a sort of uh, I guess river that we have to cross where all our le uh, all our logs here are going left or we that's what we plan and all the logs here are going to be going right. So that's what we've done. Let's do the same for anything with the cars now. So I'm going to pick out car left. So dot car left and dot car right. And I'm gonna give it a background color, maybe of like light gray this time, because this is gonna symbolize a road that we need to cross. And once again, it seems we have missed a very important div. So maybe let's fix that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we're gonna add one here. And then we need to get rid of one of these.
Okay, so hopefully you are now at this place where you have this kind of styling. If you are, great. If not, please check out the code that I have shared in the description below. This is what your game should look like at the moment. And now it's nearly time, actually. Let's go ahead and add a few more things to our HTML before moving on. So we've made our grid. The other thing that I want to actually show in here is how many seconds we have left. So I'm just going to go ahead and add an H3 tag that's going to say seconds left. And essentially, we're going to count down the seconds. So I'm going to add a span tag and the span tag, so make sure that's a span, it's going to show us the time we have left. So I'm just going to hard code a 20 in here for now. But I'm also going to pick out the span tag by giving it an ID and I'm going to give it the ID of time left. So we've done that. I'm also going to do the same for results. So H3 result. And once again, I'm going to uh, give it a span tag like so. And I'm going to give this an ID. Of result, okay, which we're just going to leave uh, like that, or we can hard code it as a zero. I'm also going to give a space here just to space this out a little bit. And great. One other thing I'm actually going to add is a uh, start pause button. So here is a button and it's going to say start the game or pause the game if we want. And let's pick it out. So I'm going to give an ID of um, start pause button. Okay, so I think we've got everything now. So the only thing we've got left to do, so after all of this has been loaded, we then want to go to our JavaScript file. So I'm going to make a script tag. Uh, and I'm just going to do the source, which is going to be the app.js file, which we are yet to make. So let's go ahead and make that. Make sure that's at the bottom uh, of your body tag. So in between the two body tags after all the HTML that you have just written. So let's make a new file. This time it's a JavaScript file. I'm going to call it app, which is just showing up here as app.js. Thank you, WebStorm, for doing that for me. And let's start picking stuff out. So. First things first, let's actually pick out everything in here. I need to pick out this span element and I'm going to do so by the ID. So in my app file, I'm going to use document and a JavaScript method called query selector. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Query selector, making sure that's with a capital S query selector. And I'm looking for the uh, element with the ID of time left. So this needs to be an ID. And let's say this is something. I'm going to save this as the time left display, just like so. So we've got the time left display. The next thing we need to pick out. So let's go ahead, go, let's go looking in our file again. So we need the query selector. And let's go looking for the span with the ID result. So I'm looking for an element with the ID, this, this means ID of result. And let's save this as result display. You got it. You can, of course, call it whatever you wish. So we picked out those things. Let's also pick out the button. So once again, document query selector. And let's go looking for the ID of start pause button. We're going to save this as the start uh, pause button. Great. So I think this might be it for now. Actually, let's go ahead and pick out all these squares as well. So every single little div that I made. So let's save this as squares. And I'm going to use document and query selector. This time all. Because I want to pick out all. All the divs that live in the 
div with the class name of grid. So the dot is saying that I'm looking, I'm going to go looking in here, I'm looking in here, and I'm looking for anything with a class name of grid. This dot means class name, so I'm looking for that, but then I'm also looking for the only the divs inside of it. Okay, so I'm looking for all of these and I'm saving them under the const squares. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's carry on. So first off, I just want to add a little green square, which is going to be my frog. And I want to essentially add it to the board and then I want to move it with my keyboard. So that is the next steps that we are going to do. So let's get this up and let's write a uh, function called move frog. Okay, so this is a function that I am going to write and what I'm going to do, so each time that I essentially move a key on my keyboard, so we're going to have to listen, I'm just going to console log this out for now, console log moved. I essentially need to listen out for any time that uh, I press a key on my keyboard, so I'm going to use document and then I'm going to use add event listener and to listen out for the event of key up. So there's many, many you can choose uh, from. There is a list on MDN. There's like click, but I'm going to use key up. There's also key down. And so basically each time I press any key on my keyboard, any key at all, I'm going to uh, invoke this function. Okay, so this is a callback function. If this happens, then this function is called. Okay, cool. So at the moment, if you see here, I'm just going to get the console log up. I can press any key, moved, moved. Doesn't matter, right? Any key. However, now that I um, know that is working, I want to decide which keys are going to move my mouth, my uh, frog, sorry, and where it's going to move, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is, first off, let's go ahead and add uh, our frog to the board. So I'm going to make a class of frog as well, dot frog. And I'm going to give it the background color of green. And we're going to add this dynamically in our JavaScript. So I'm going to use these squares, actually. I'm going to grab all these squares. So if I go ahead and actually console log all these squares, this is what they will look like. I've literally picked every single one up from my HTML and put it in a huge array or node list and they are here with the class names. So that's all I have done. And now I'm going to use that. So I'm going to go into my squares array Okay, and wherever I am at the moment, so let's choose which index we want to be in. So I'm going to say let current index equal. And because we start counting from zero, so like this div has index zero, this one has one, two, three. If I say my current index is zero, I should be here. So zero. And if I pass a zero through into my array, or in other words, as we now know it as current index, and then I do class list add, and then I add the class of frogger, or frog, sorry. Where do we expect uh, this to show up when we press a key? So I'm going to press a key. That's right, it shows up here. Because this is the div with index zero, okay? It is the first div in our array. If I change this now to be two, it will be... Let's press a key here because this is the square with index two, zero, one, two. Okay, so hopefully you've got that. Let's carry on. So this is going to decide where we start. We want to start at the uh, starting block. So there's a starting block. This actually has the index 76. So let's go ahead and change that to start at 76. So if we move frog well, I only want to move the frog actually 
if we press a certain key. So I'm actually going to use the switch case for this. This is the JavaScript switch case. And I'm going to pass to E key. And if the case is arrow left, so essentially what we're doing is passing through the event into our function. And if the event's key is arrow left, then what do we want to happen? Well, at the moment, we're just going to put console log move left, because that's what we want to happen. Let's maybe make this a bit smaller now. Uh, and we are going to break. So there's our first case. Um, let's do another one. Case arrow right. We're going to move right. Let's do arrow up, move up, and do arrow down. And you guessed it, it's going to be moved down. So let's see if this works first before we do anything else. So now let's press up, We're getting move up. Let's press left, move left, move right, and move down. So you should be pressing the arrows on your keyboard and you should be seeing these show up in your console log. This works because we are passing through the event into our function and then they're getting the key of the event. If I console log out the event, so E is for event, each time we press it, you'll see how much information that actually is. So if I press up, oops, console log is not defined, con, sol, log, let's press up now. See, okay, so this is all that's happening. There's so much stuff. And we're looking through it, we're going, oh my God, there's so much stuff, but I want the key. And the key is arrow up. We could use the key code, but this is sort of depreciated now. So it's safer to use the E key. Cool. So great, hopefully that makes sense. So how do we move left? Well, to move left, it's kind of simple, really. We just want to be in the index that's minus one of this. So we're going to get the current index. And we're just going to minus one from it, just like so. Okay, and we're going to save it back to index. So we can write it like this, or a shorthand for writing this is just taking current index and saying that minus one equals. So that will now change whatever current index is. So if I press move left, current index will now be changed to 75. Okay. So that's all I'm doing. And to move right, well, we're just going to get current index and we're going to add one to it. So plus equals one. And to move up, well, this is probably more interesting because we're actually going to uh, use the width of the grid. So we know that the width, this can be a constant as it's not going to change, is nine because we have nine squares here. So if I want to, if so say if I'm here and I want to be in this square here and this square is index 76, well, this square is obviously 76 minus nine, right? So what, do you, what even is that? Index 67. Well, we simply minus equals the width, which we know is nine. Okay, so now if we press up, we are essentially making current index. We're getting that value 76. We're minusing nine from it, which is giving us the value 67. Cool. And of course, then to move down, it's just the opposite. So current index plus the width. Great. So let's see how that looks. Do, 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 do. Awesome. However, we're leaving a very long, uh, thing of frogs behind us. And of course, if we try move down, we can't do that because there's not any divs. So everything is breaking as you know, we can't move in here. So let's fix all of this. So before I call each function, I'm actually going to remove the frog from whatever square it's in. Okay, so I'm going to use class list remove. So this means that if I press up, so let's go ahead and start off actually with maybe we should, um, add the frog class here as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add the frog class. 
Okay, so we're here. And if I press up, the first thing that's gonna happen is I'm gonna remove the frog from the current index, so index 76, so I'm gonna remove it from here, and then we're gonna to add, to do all this additions to find out what our current index is based on what key we pressed, and then wherever we end up, we're gonna add the frog class again. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Let's see if that's worked. Wonderful. So now we can move around. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is actually limit our movements so that if we go into this column here, we can't move anymore because otherwise we end up on the square on the other side and we don't want this behavior. So similarly to being here, this will cause breakages, okay, because there's no div to go into on the left side. So what I'm going to do is use maths for this. I'm going to use modulus. And what I essentially need to do is say that any square with the index of zero or any square with the index nine, 18, and so on. So any of these numbers, if they are divisible by nine and leave no remainder, so that's what I'm going to write. So if current index, so whatever square index we are in, index modulus width equals zero. So if this is true, we, are, we know that we are either in this square, this square, this square, this square, this square, all these squares, we know we are here, okay? So if that is true, we don't wanna be able to move left, but otherwise we can. So actually what we need to do, as long as the current index does not equal zero, then we get the current index and minus one from it. But if it does equal zero, well then this is not true, so we don't do anything. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. If I replace this with numbers maybe, current index at the moment when we are Oops, that should say current index. So at the moment when we are here, we're in current index zero. Zero modulus nine, because we have defined width as nine here, does in fact equal zero. So we don't do this, okay? S same as if we are here, this, this square has the index nine and nine modulus nine does equal zero. So this is not true, so we don't do this, okay? However, if we're here, then this statement is true because the remainder will not be zero, so then we execute this, so we are able to move left. I know that might be a lot, especially for those of you who are not familiar with uh, the modulus operator, so please pause here um, maybe you get a piece of pen and paper and write down the equation because it is, it's just maths at the end of the day. Great, so we're going to apply the same logic to the rest of these. Uh, let's do moving right next. So this time we want to move right as long as uh, the remainder is smaller than eight. So if current index modulus width, okay, and the remainder is smaller than width, which is nine minus one. If that is true, then we want to add one to the current index, okay, only if it's true. And let's do the rest as well. So moving up, uh, this one will be if current index this time minus width is larger than equals, larger than or equals zero. So as long as we are essentially in this row, okay, or anything under it, then we can move one up. However, if we're in this row, so essentially if you know, the uh, index. So for example, let's do this again. So if I'm here, 
we are in a current index with this index one. So I replace this with one. One minus width is minus eight, right? So minus eight is not larger than zero, which means we can't execute this, which means we can't go up. However, if we are, let's go one down. So this has the index 10. 10 minus nine is larger than zero, okay? So then we can go up, okay? Because 10 minus nine is one, and that is indeed larger than zero. Okay, and one last one going down. If current index plus width this time is larger than width multiplied by width, then we can move down. Because essentially we're checking that we're in any one of these squares minus the last row. Again, get out your pens and papers and pads and just uh, literally just try it out yourself. Just go into any of these and be like, ah, oh, I'm in index, square with index, whatever, and see how that works. So great, hopefully that makes sense. I'm just gonna get rid of these console logs and let's test it out. So we should now be able to move everywhere correctly so we can't oh, oh we're stopping there i'm actually pressing the right arrow nothing's happening i'm pressing the up arrow nothing's happening i'm pressing the down arrow fine for fine and stop i'm pressing it nothing's happening and we go left and great nothing's happening i'm not getting any breakages either there's no like red in my console log everything is looking good wonderful so what we need to do next is get some logs moving right and some cars moving so let's go ahead and do that next so to move the cars and the logs, actually, I'm gonna go back in here and give these, we can just add to the class list. Perhaps we should do it by class list rather than ID as we are going to actually, yeah, okay, let's do that. So let's give all of these an ID, sorry, a class. And I'm not using ID because I'm gonna be repeating these um, Again, so just in here, I'm gonna add a new class. This is separate to this class. We're gonna do, we need a space. Let's give this L1, let's give this L2, L3, L4, L5. And now I'm gonna stop at five and this will become apparent soon, I promise. I'm just, I just don't think there's any point giving all of these squares in a row an ID when actually we just want uh, the colors of the squares to be changing based on uh, five squares. This really doesn't make any sense now, but it will, I promise. So I'm gonna give this the ID of L1 again, L2, L3. So now anything with this class is gonna have the same behavior and so on and so on. And let's also do L4. Now the log right, um, I'm gonna start with L5 this time. And then L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, L6, L7. L7, oops, not L7, uh, L1 again, L2, L3. So let's start with the logs first. So what I'm gonna say now is that anything with the class of L1 or L2 or L3, the classes of those are gonna have the background color uh, Brown. And then anything with L4 and L5 is gonna have the background color like blue. Okay, so in actual fact, we don't really need this anymore. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna comment this out because now we're using these classes to color in everything with log left. So there we go. 
We've essentially made one log, another log, and another log, and another log, and we want these to be going left, and we want these to be going right. And as you will see, this is L1. So all I'm gonna do is just change the location so it looks like it's moving left, okay, by literally getting L3 and we're making it move to L2, L2 to L1, okay? So just doing that and doing it again and so on and so on. But not all the way because we only really have to account for these, okay? Because from here on, it repeats itself, right? Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. This should, this should move like this one and then this should loop, move like that one and this should move like that one. Okay, so we've done that. So what I'm gonna do is write a function. So I'm just gonna make some space so we can see everything a bit better. So what I'm gonna do is write a function called function, <laughs> function called move log left. And all I'm gonna do is use the switch case again. So switch. And we're gonna be looking for true statements, okay? So if this is true, well, what I wanna do is actually get, uh, I wanna go in here and pick out everything with log left. So we know how to do this now. I'm just going to do this up here. So const log left plural equals document query selector all remember so just like we did to pick out all the divs in the grid and i'm going to look for anything with the dot so the class of log left so i've just collected anything that has the class log left and we're going to check if they have these classes so let's go ahead and grab all the logs left and actually I'm now going to write another function, actually, function auto move logs. And I'm going to grab logs left. And for each, so for each of the divs with the class of log left, I'm going to choose to call log left. You don't have to call it log left. You can call it whatever you wish. That is how for each works. And for each of them, I'm going to actually pass them through the move log left function. So each of them will now be affected by this function, move log left. And I'm gonna get the log, so or the div with the class of log left. I'm gonna put it in the function. So I put it into this function now, boom. Put it in here. And if, so if log left class list contains L1, Okay, so essentially, again, what we've done is we've grabbed all of these divs, we've saved it as logs left, and now I've got all of these divs, so each one, and I'm passing it through into the move log left function. So I'm getting a div and I'm checking if it has a class of L1. Okay, and if it does, well, what I want to do is get that log left or the log going left class list remove L1 and instead log left class list add L2 because we're going left. So we need to replace it with L2 two right because l1 yes yeah, so whatever this one is needs to be there okay so perhaps maybe i'm just going to show you how this looks at the moment so i'm just going to call the function auto move logs but of course we need to uh put this in a timing event right we need to ex essentially make this execute, uh, you know, every maybe second or so. So I'm going to do this down here. I'm going to say, uh, we need to put this in a set 
interval. So I'm just going to put set interval auto move logs and let's do it every 1000 milliseconds. So every second. Oops, let's get rid of that. You will see that this has now changed to L2. It's obviously hard to see it on here because they're all the same color, but this has now changed to this, which means we need to change this L2 to an L3 and so on and so on and so on. So we're gonna do all of that. So case, in fact, I'm just gonna copy this. If it contains L2, then remove L2 and add class L3. And same for L3. If it contains L3, remove L3 and add L4. And we need to do one more, actually two more, sorry. If it contains L4, remove L4 and add L5. And of course, if it contains L5, remove L5 and add L1. So now if I refresh this, you, see, you should see them all, the top row, moving one to the left. Ta-da! There we go. And of course, it's doing it every one second. So if we look in here, boom, boom. We're literally just changing this to that, this to that, this to that, and it's looking like it's moving. So hopefully you now see why I did that. Of course, you could have done L1, you could have done all the way up to L9, but there's no point because actually the rotation only happens on five squares, okay? So that is what's happening. See, if you take any of the one, two, three, four, five, and then essentially goes back here, one, two, three, four, five, and it goes back here, okay? Even though it visually doesn't look like it, that's what's happening. So great, hopefully that makes sense. Now that we've done this, we're literally just gonna apply the same thing to this row and then the cars. So let's do it. This is good for repetition and good for um, learning again. So I'm actually just gonna get all of this move, move log left and call it move log right. And we're gonna pass through the log moving right. And how do we get this? Well, we need to look into our document and get all the logs moving right by picking out anything with a class name log right. So we're going in here, we're finding all of these, okay? And once we have our logs right, because there's many of them, I need to get each one, so logs right for each log going right, so for each div essentially, I need to pass that div through move log right. So I'm gonna pass it in right now, log right. Now that's being passed into here, and if this, so we're passing true because we're looking for true statements. So if this is true, however, let's change all of these to log right now, so control G. We'll do that on WebStorm, log right. If this is true, well, now we need to go the opposite way. So if it contains L1, we change it to an L5. So we remove L1, and we add L5. So now we're going the other way. If it contains L2, we remove L2 and add L1. Three, three, so we go the other way, L2. Four, four, three, five, five, four. So once again, let's check it out. Of course we need to, okay, so that's being called in the auto logs, right, log right. And let's see, amazing. So visually they're going the other way. Cool, now let's do the cars. So the cars, um, let's decide, I guess we want the cars to be smaller, right? Like two squares. So let's color that on our board first. But once again, I'm gonna actually just add um, the same. Well, no, because they're smaller, we're only gonna have to have a rotation of three. So let's go ahead and do that now. All I'm gonna do is do C1, C2, and the car's gonna just be one square, C3, C1, C2, C3, C1, C2, C3, and do the same here. C1, C2, C3, 
C1, C2, C3, C1, C2, C3. So now let's go in here and pick out that anything with the class of C1 is going to be our car. So let's just give it a background color, maybe like black or something. And then also that means that C2 and C3 are now going to be our roads. So what color do we give the road? Light gray. Let's get rid of these. Don't really need them. There we go. So there are our cars. And now let's make the cars rotate. So I need to, to go from this one to here, to here, to here, and then change from here to here to here. And same for these. So let's do it. I'm going to go in here and let's write a function. Um, I know I have to auto move cars and auto move logs, but we could just auto move elements instead, right? So that we can just put everything in there, auto move elements. And now let's write a function once again, like pretty much exactly the same, just a little bit shorter. So let's pick out anything. So const cars left equals document query select all. I'm going to look everything for the class of car left and do the same for cars going right. Cars. Cars right. Cars right. Cool. So that means logs left. This should be a capital L, sorry which means I've obviously done that somewhere else, logs left. Okay, so that means that once again, I'm just going to get my cars going, cars going left for each car left. I'm gonna pass it through a function which I'm yet to write called move car left and pass through the car left. And do the same for cars right, car right move car right okay so let's write our function again i'm probably just going to copy this because it's pretty much the same let's start with the left one paste it here move car left car left and if let's just change these so Control g car left, class list, oops, car left. If car left, class, class list contains C1, then remove C1 and change it to C2. Again here, C2, C2, change it to C3. And C3, C3, but this time we change this to C1. So it loops, the loop stops there. And let's just get rid of these. And now car moving right. So I'm just going to use control G. Car right. And we go the other way this time. So this should be C3. This should be C1. And this should be C2. Okay. And there we go. Everything is moving. This is looking good. The next thing I need to do is actually decide what's safe to go on and what isn't. And also we need to make sure that we can see our frog at all times. So I can do so easily in two ways. The easiest is probably just to move this down to the bottom. So it's the last styling applied. So there we go. You can also use important to override any classes. Great. So I think now probably let's decide what makes something safe to go on or not. So I'm going to write a function to uh, check for a loose. So let's do that. So back in here, I'm going to write a function called loose and let's define what happens. So what happen if essentially 
Let's say if you hit a car which has the class list C1, then the game's over, right? Because, you know, the car hit you. Uh, but also, if you go in the water, you also, the game's over, right? And the water is this one. So if we go in here, if our current index, so where we are, contains a class of C1 or these, then it's a game over. So essentially, if we look here again, so if our current index is any one of these at any point, so say I'm in this div and it has the, the class list, uh, like C1, for example, at any point, then the game is over. So we need to check for this. So what I'm gonna do is say, if current index, so we need to get our squares actually, all the squares, so all the divs from our board that you remember from before. And if squares, well, let's go into the array and we're gonna pass through the current index. So if current index is zero, we're gonna get the first square in our array. And if that square class list contains C1 to the car, well, we know that's a game over, right? So what am I gonna do? I'm actually gonna get the result display, which we've already picked up out here. Oops. And I'm just gonna do text content You lose, so just like that. And I'm also going to actually stop this. So let's assign this to a um, ID. I have to do this up here actually. So let timer ID, at the moment it's null. I'm just leaving it as null. This is a shorthand for me doing that. And then we need to assign the sentence interval to the timer ID, which means that if I wanna stop this, I just need to pass the timer ID through clear interval. So clear interval timer ID. And let's actually remove the uh, frog. So the frog obviously is here because wherever the current index is, that's where our frog is. So class list, remove frog, okay? And also let's remove the uh, event listener. So document remove event listener so we're gonna stop listening out for key up on our keyboard, that essentially moves the frog. Great, and let's check for the lose, uh, where do we wanna do this? I think maybe with the, with the lose piece with here. So each time everything moves, I also want to check for a lose. Okay, so that will be checking every one second to be precise. So let's see if that works. I'm just gonna go here and then I'm gonna go here and ah, oh, we lose because the car hit us. So once again, maybe a bit slower. Let's stand here and wait. Ah, okay, we get you lose showing up, the frog disappears and now obviously we can't move anything. The, uh, it's not listening out to our key ups anymore. And even if we wanted to, we couldn't move the uh, Mal the frog, I guess, because, you know, we've removed it, so. Actually, that's not technically true because we add the class of frog in the move frog function. So we do need to remove that event listener. Cool. So this is looking good. Let's do the same for if he goes in the water. So if this is true, or, that's how you write or, or, it contains, what is the water, light blue, L4 or L5. So, contains L4 or contains L5. Okay, so that is it. Should we try it out just so everyone's on the same page? So let's actually try past this without getting hit. Oh, well, yes, okay, so we got, we fell in the water. So that is looking good. Great, now the next thing we need to do is uh, see what happens if we win. And if to, to win, we just have to really get to the red thing, which is our ending block. So that's the class we're gonna check for this time. So 
So function win if squares current index class list contains uh, ending block. Well then, let's also do all these things. So clear the timer, remove the event listener. Maybe let's not let's not remove the frog because you know, it'd be nice to see the frog. Uh, you win, but we do clear the timer. So whoops, let's put this function function. Why did I do that? Make sure these are parentheses, so the curly braces. These are parentheses and these are curly braces. Okay, so let's also check for this every one second after moving everything. So cool, now let's actually try to get to the end. So this is gonna be fun. Uh, ta -ta -ta. And then I need to stay on these. You win. Cool. and then everything's taken away. So great, the last thing we need to do is just add the timer. So let's do it, let's add the timer. So I'm gonna start off with the time, uh, let current time, and let's say we wanna do this. I'm just gonna put five seconds for now because you know, I don't wanna wait around loads in order to see if this works, but we can change it to something later. And all I'm going to do is so we need to show i'm actually going to do it when we move everything so in here as well i actually so each time this function gets called i want to get the current time and just minus one from it okay and then i want to show it in the time left display so i'm going to use time left display text content current time. And because we, um, we hard code the number 20 there. So by the time this happens, we take away one from whatever the number that we saved up here is. So maybe let's make this 20 just to make things easier. So it's starting off as 20, but then we call this function and we take away one from 20 and we show 19. So this is looking good. I think that should be fine. We also need to write what happens uh, if we hit zero, right? So if, where's the lose function? So another thing that we need to check for is if the current time suddenly equals zero or is less than or equal to zero, then also we lose, right? because essentially the game is kind of over. So great, so if that is true, we also lose and we clear everything out. Now I can also, so let me just show you what this looks like. Again, we are gonna have to wait till 20, so I'm gonna come back to this. We can also hook up the start pause button to essentially pause our timer from uh, counting down. So I'm gonna do this by grabbing the start pause button, let's just check how much time we have left, four, three, two, one, you lose, okay, because we run out of time, and then that's just staying at zero, cool, but if I want to start the game, because at the moment it just sort of auto starts, uh, we can use the start button to do this, so all I'm going to do is get the start pause button, and choose add event listener to listen out for clicks on it, okay, and if it is clicked, I could write a function. Should we write a function? Should we just do it in here? Um, I'll do it in here just to show you that you can also just write the logic of a function here. So start pause button. Why is it not liking this? Does this not exist? Start pause button. Start pause button. Ah, start pause button. Start pause button, add event listener. Uh, if timer ID exists, because at the moment when we press start timer, this will be null, 
okay? So if we press again and there is a timer ID, we just want to clear interval timer ID. Okay, we want to pause it, else timer ID equals set interval. And then we essentially just move this whole thing actually just to here, okay? So we move that in here and we also move the part where it listens out for the key frog. For the, sorry, for the movements of the frog, for us moving the keys. So I'm going to actually take this and only allow this to happen if we have pressed the start button. Okay, so whoops. To make this a function, we need to actually do this. So that is now a callback function and Great. So once again, say we are playing this game for the first time, we've just started the game, timer ID as we set it up here is null. Okay, so we press the button, we click it, timer ID does not exist, so we don't clear the interval. So we just go to set our, set our countdown going essentially, so we auto move the elements every one second, and we enable us listening out to uh, key presses so we can move the frog. However, if we press the button again, so at this point a timer ID does exist, right, because our countdown is going, then we stop it, we clear the interval, and whatever time we are left with is the current time. So let's check it out. So obviously nothing's happening, stop. So I can move it, I can move it, I can move it, to pause. Ah, this should, I should not be able to move that, so... When I've paused it, I also want to remove event listener. Let's try again. Start. Moving around. Pause. Okay, and I can't move the frog anymore. And start. Let's console log the time ID to see what is going on. So start, pause, obviously exists. I'm gonna press it again. Ah, timer ID, we need to assign the value null again. So let's try now. Start, oops. Start. Pause, restart, okay, cool. So actually, you know what? We probably need to check for these collisions way often because if I'm fast enough, it doesn't register because it only checks every one second, right? But if we move faster than one second, um, kind of doesn't work. So I'm gonna move the check for um, lose and win and I'm gonna put it in its own function or own, sorry, uh, interval so timer id let what should we call this uh outcome timer id again equal nothing and i'm just going to say outcome timer id set interval and we're going to check for wins, uh, loses and wins, so function check outcomes, I'm going to put those in there, and then I'm going to check for this every 50 milliseconds, so you really can't uh, cheat I guess, so that is going to keep going. And I guess we'll probably clear it here when the game is, you know, of uh, paused. Because we don't really need it going, I guess, if it's paused. So let's stop that. And also let's stop it on the lose. So again, clear interval. 
clear and full. So now we should check for this way more often. Let's try it out. Start. So now if I, oh, see it's checking way more often now. Let's refresh, start. There's no cheating that's gonna happen. So there we go, that is the basics, the super basics for the game. Please take this game, improve on it, uh, you know, add levels, or perhaps, you know, you wanna be able to start a new game from here instead of having to refresh. All these things you can do, hopefully now I've showed you how you can take everything you've learned and apply it. Um, let's do this, let's try win this. Okay, so actually if I wait here, there should be a empty space for me to go soon, okay. Oh, I'm not meant to go in the water, sorry. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Um, I don't know why I have a result. We don't really need a result, let's get rid of that. So I need to go in here. And there we go! So I won, I did it. Uh, the result, we don't need that to be a zero because we're not collecting any points. So let's just keep the result as this and it'll either say we win or we lose. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and I'll see you in the next videos. In this game, we are gonna build Connect 4. We're gonna take a different approach with this game. We have been working with a lot of modulus. This is a different approach in which we are just gonna define which indexes uh, create a match or don't create a match of four. So I'm excited to share this alternative solution to you to what you have been doing previously. So what are we waiting for? These are the JavaScript methods and properties that you will learn in this section. Okay, so let's do it. As you can see here, I've already have my project set up with an index HTML file, an index JS file, and a styles CSS file, which we now have to hook up to work together. I have gone ahead and put in some HTML boilerplate for us. We have a title, which no, will not appear in the browser. It will, however, appear in the tab, which I'll show you later, and a link tag so we can link our style sheet. Now, as our style sheet is in the root of our project, I simply have to write styles CSS to hook it up. I'm also gonna put in a script tag, and if you know me, I'm gonna show you two ways to put in the script tag. We can put in a script tag at the bottom of our body. So if I just put a script tag with the source, and once again, it's in the root of our project, so the index.js file, so that is what our script tag um, is linked to. I'm just gonna put a char set as well. Whoops. So char set, uh, that one, thank you very much. Now, if you know me, you I will now tell you that you can put your script tag at the bottom of the body, but make sure that is after any HTML that we want uh, to put in, or alternatively, you can also put it uh, in the header, so in the head. I'm gonna just put it here just to show you another option because we can also use a DOM content loaded. We can use an event listener to listen out for uh, once everything here is loaded. And some people say that is a more foolproof way, so I'm gonna show you how to do it now. As always, the option's up to you. If you prefer to use the script tag at the bottom of your um, body, that is fine. Just don't use both, otherwise you'll have two scripts running. So I'm just gonna leave mine here because I wanna show you how to do this. You can also use the document and use add event listener to listen out for when the DOM content has loaded. Okay, and then once it has all our JavaScript, we're gonna put in between these two little curly braces. Okay, done. Now, let's move on. Now, because I want this to be a sort of beginner lesson, we could use JavaScript to add all these divs for our Connect4 game, but I'm just gonna keep it very simple and put them in here in our HTML. So our Connect4 game is gonna have, it's gonna be seven squares wide and six squares high, okay? But I also wanna put in like a secret seven squares at the bottom because we want to tell our browser where the bottom of the 
grid is and this is just a solution that I thought of of course like you don't have to use it but this is just the way that I would solve it in order to build our game so what's that seven times seven is 49 let's do it I'm gonna make a div that I'm gonna give the class of grid because this is where all the magic's gonna happen this is gonna be our game grid okay so let's call it a class now any div that I'm going to put in here I essentially want to be or represent the little squares on my connect for game so as I said I'm going to need seven times six for the game but then a secret seven which we will go into later so I need 49 of these so I'm sort of just going to place one two three four five six seven eight nine ten of course like I said we could do this in javascript um, I do do it I do add these divs with JavaScript in a lot of my other games. So if you want to check out how I do that, it's a create board function that I use pretty generically. Please go ahead and check those out. So one, two, three, four, five, that's 50 divs. I'm just going to get rid of the last one to make it 49. Okay. Now I did say I wanted the last seven to have like a, like a, uh, represent the end of our, you know, connect for board so I'm just going to give them a class of taken again you will see why later on so there's one two three four five six seven great so we've got a div with a class of grid with 49 divs in it now let's actually style it up to uh, see it visually so because we want to grab the grid, I'm gonna grab the class. So use a dot for class of grid. And I'm going to decide that I want all my squares to be 20 by 20 pixels, which means that I need to make the grid, well, let's first give it a border of one pixel solid. And as a default, it's gonna appear black, solid one pixel black, and then height, I'm gonna go with 120 pixels, of course, and then width seven times 20 is 140 pixels. Okay, and now while I'm here, I'm also gonna style every single div inside the div with the class of grid, and I can do so like this, by once again grabbing the class of grid, and then every div inside of that, so that's how I would write that, is gonna have the following styling. I just want them to be height, 20 pixels and width 20 pixels. Now I'm just gonna give it a background color for now so we can see what's going on. So now if I just copy the relative, oops, copy the path, sorry, and then go to a browser and paste it, you will see there's my grid and there are all the squares. But it obviously doesn't look right, right? We need the squares to fit in the grid. So I want them to sort of like snake over. So I'm gonna do this by adding display flex. So now if I show you what that looks like and just refresh, whoops, refresh. Okay, now they're in there, but they're all squashed. Look how thin they are. I don't want that. I want them to snake over. So I'm also gonna use flex wrap wrap and uh, there we go okay so now oh i think we've got too many one two three four five six seven yet yeah, we have too many but that's that is fine seven times one two three four five six seven so we need to delete seven ten more ten of these let's delete ten we did a few too many so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten delete okay great so now they all fit if i s just go over the one two you will see how they are snaking over and then of course we have the last seven which have the class of taken so so they're outside of my grid and we're just using them to let our code know that this is the bottom of the connect for a uh, board game is that a board game you know what i mean game Okay, so I'm just gonna get rid of the background color blue. And while we're here, I'm gonna add a class of player, player, player one. I'm gonna give it a background color of, let's say, red. 
and then a border radius because I'm going to make them circles of 10 pixels because a border radius on a 20 by 20 square is going to make this a circle. So we've got player one and let's make player two. Let's make two, player two blue. Okay, cool. So we've got everything we need. Now let's start picking out elements from our HTML and our JavaScript so we can work with them. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually pick out the squares. So I'm going to save them as squares. I'm going to use document query selector all, thank you tab nine, to pick out. And once again, this is going to be useful because we just learned this to pick out all the divs inside the div with a class of grid. So that's how I would do that. So we've just picked out all the squares. Uh, now I also want a way to, I guess, tell the user whose go it is. So I'm gonna use an H3 tag for this and I'm just going to write the current player is player and then I'm gonna use a span tag to just interrupt that H3 tag and I'm gonna hard code a one and I'm just gonna use an ID just in case we wanna use another span, right? So I'm just gonna put current player. And while we're here, I'm also just going to put a place we can show the result. I'm gonna leave it empty for now and just give an ID of result. Okay, so that's looking good. And in here, let's also pick out, uh, let's pick out the result. So const result equals document query selector. I could use get element by ID, but it's totally up to you. I'm gonna use query selector to look for an ID. So we use a hash for ID. We're looking for the ID of result. And another ID we need to pick out, which is the uh, display for the current player. So I'm just gonna display current player equals, once again, we get the document, whoops. And we use, I'm gonna use query selector again, just to make everything consistent. I'm gonna look for the ID and save it for our JavaScript. Okay, we also need to let our JavaScript know who the current player is and we hard coded one, so I'm just gonna put this here two. I've used a let as this will not always be one, it might be player two, so that's why I used a let there. Okay. Now, I think the next thing I wanna do is add um, an on click to all our squares. Okay, so I want uh, essentially something to happen every time I click any of the squares in our connectful grid. So I'm gonna use a for loop for this. Oops, making sure that I'm in the curly braces. For let i equals zero. And now, because we're dealing with the squares, uh, I could use the squares length. That will mean even including all the taken squares. And I think that's fine. Let's just carry on and see what happens. Okay. So for each of the squares in my squares, in my uh, grid, sorry, I want to get the squares. And then for each one, because they're looping, so I'm going into the array and I'm looping, I just want to add an on click. And then on the click, and we need a function, so I just use an arrow function. For now, I'm just going to make an alert that says, you have clicked square. Just so we can see what's happening, I want to show you, so I'm just going to use the I. And save. Now let's refresh. So if I click here, you have clicked square 13. Let's refresh. I'm gonna click the first one. You have clicked square zero because as you know, we start a race from zero. Okay, so this is working. We have added an on click to each of these squares, including these ones, but for now, let's just ignore it. Um, we'll decide what we wanna do with that later, but I think that's fine. Cool. It's pretty fun, isn't it? We know exactly which square we have clicked. Yeah. Okay, so we actually don't want this alert. I've just done that so we, you can see what's going on before me coding any further, because I think that is important. Okay, so delete. Well, the first thing that we want to do 
is decide how we're going to solve this. So obviously in Connect4, when you drop the little um, token, we need to account for gravity, right? So I think let's do it that if the square below your current square that you want to go is taken, you can go on top of it, right? Simple. So that's why we added the class of taken at the very bottom, because at the moment we're going to write something that says you can only go on that bottom. So only on this row, because all of these have the class taken. So if the square below your current root square is taken, you can go on top of it. Cool. I'm just going to minimize this because we don't need it. So how do we write this in code? If we go into our squares array, I'm just going to use I, but I'm going to add seven because I want to check what's directly below the current square that we are at. So we do that by adding seven to the index number of it. And then if that square class list contains taken, well, we can go, right? So I would do it like oops, this. So if that is true and the square directly below us is taken, uh, if the current player equals player one, thank you, tab nine, if the current player equals player one, I don't know why it keeps formatting like that, I don't like it. Um, well then to that square, so once again, that square, I'm going to add the class list. Um, I'm going to add, well, I'm going to add taken for one because it's obviously taken. But I'm also going to add, so square list, class list, add player one. Okay. And then, of course, we want to change it to player two. So current player equals two. Um, and then let's display it. So display current player in a HTML. Uh, and let's just display whatever the current player is because we've just changed it to two. So let's actually show that visually to our user. Okay. Uh, click. Okay, cool. It's changing. Okay, now it's player two's go. So we can't do anything. So now, let, now let's write some logic for if it's player two. Um, if current player equals two. Well, then essentially we just... I'm just going to copy this really because we're doing the same, but just we're going to add player two and then change it back to player one. Cool. Um, and then I'm also just going to add an, you know, like an else because we've got these if, if this, or we could just, um, we might have to do an else if, I think we might have to do that. Okay, yes, we might have to do that. Else if, else alert, uh, can't go here. Okay, so now, change player two, player two goes. Let's play one again. Woo, player two, oh, can't go there. Where's my alert? Where's my alert? It's annoying. Hmm, what did I do? Ah, right, I put it in the wrong place. Ah, else if alert. Okay. So now one can't go here, can't go here, but player two can go there. Can player one go here? Yes, it can. So awesome. So that's why I did the else if. If I just got rid of this and just did an alert, well, obviously, yes, I know I can't go there. I can click here. It'll just tell me I can't go there even though I can because it's uh, sort of like executing this and then executing that anyway. So that's why I did else if else. Cool. Okay. So we've done that part of the logic. The last thing I need to do is check the board for wins. So I'm going to do that with a function. Um, this I do actually want to execute every time we click 
So there's no need for else if ifs. We just want to check the board every time we click on a square. So now let's write our function. I'm going to do up here, of course, because we need to write it. Um, we need to write the function before we use the function. So function check board like so. Now, this might not be like the most, uh, I guess it's a lazy way to check for wins. I mean, if you wanna, uh, I guess, make this cleverer, please do and share it with me. I just couldn't be bothered. It's a small board, right? So I've just gone ahead and figured out all the winning combinations on it. So please feel free to take this. I'm gonna obviously put it in my um, GitHub, but I've just got a winning uh, arrays array. Again, if I've got any wrong in here, I'm sorry. Um, let me know. But conswing arrays, and there we go. So I have literally just pasted all the possible winning arrays. Uh, so by using my index number, of course, on our board. Once again, if you can think of something cleverer, then please do. I'm really lazy. This was fine. Okay, so we've got our winning arrays. Now let's actually use them in order to check our board if any of the players have a winning array. So to do this, um, well, again, I'm just going to use a for loop. So for this time, let uh, I, we can use I, we can use Y, like it's totally up to you, whatever you want. Okay, so as long as Y, I'm going to get the winning arrays uh, length. It's going to loop over, but we're going to loop over each one of these, right? We're not looping over this, 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 this. We're just looping over one, two, three, each of these. So however many of those are, that's however many times we're going to loop and increment by one. Now, um, it's always, I think it's always important to use const as much as possible. We don't want to use a let. This is blocked scoped. So that's why I'm using a const. We're going to save for each time we loop, we're going to save square one, square two, square three, three, square four. So I'm literally just going to name it square one, squares. For square one, we're going to go into the squares array this time. So it's const square one. Well, let's just say we want to get the index 13, we need to go into our squares array and then I'm going to literally pass through. So I'm going to go into the winning arrays and go into the, so I'm going to loop over the first one. So let's just say we're doing our first loop. I'm going to grab this. So I'm going into the winning arrays, going into the array and I'm grabbing this and then I want to get the first item from it. So I need to pass through a zero. So that is how I would do that. And whatever that is, I'm saving as square one. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. I'll talk you through it again. We now need to get square two. So what I would do is, um, of course, we're checking on our squares grid. So if I've just uh, checked yeah, the square on our board with index zero. So for example, let's go back to our board. Say I want to check, this is what we're checking. We're checking the square with index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're checking those. So of course, I would then need to go into my squares array. I'm going to go into it. And then I'm just going to pass through this value. So I'm going to, I need to now get this value, which is a 1. So I need to go into my winnings array. This is an array. So... Y still, because we're still in the same one. So whatever Y is, is going to be the same for this. So winning arrays. And then I need to get the item with index one, so zero, one. So this will return. All of this essentially is returning back one, the number one. Okay, so I'm going into the squares array. I'm going into the squares with index one. Okay, so hopefully you get that. I'm just going to carry on. If you don't, please feel free to reach out and I'm happy to explain further. And one more, of course, because we need to check for four matches. And there we go. So we are looping. We're grabbing all four squares that we want to check. 
Okay, so now we want to check um, check those squares to see if they all have the class of player one. Okay, so if um, I mean, this is probably the easiest way to do it. I'm going to go if squares one. I mean, we could do another loop, but there's only four, so I don't think it's worth it. But please feel free to do another loop if you wish. I'm just going to go squares class. If square, if that first square that we picked out, if it has a class that contains, oh God, contains a uh, player one, so if that is true, and the second square contains play one, how do I do this so it looks neat? Uh, okay. And the third square contains the class of player one, and the fourth square contains a class of player one, and if all that is true, well then, we want to get our results that we picked out. Was it result? Oops, I don't want that. I think it was result. Result. Okay. We want to get our result and use inner HTML to say player one wins. Okay. And of course, I mean, let's just copy this for player two, just make sure that that's an if statement. I'm just gonna copy all of this actually. So we have the pseudocoders as well. Oops. Okay, if, no, no, no. I'm just gonna use command D two. Player two wins, okay? I think that's all we need. Uh, whoops, we did this outside of our for loop. So I'm just going to get all of this. Right, here's our function. Okay, but then we need to actually put all of this inside. Okay. Gonna make sure if then this, oops, then otherwise this. So that is our loop. Great. I'm just gonna format this a little bit better. So just go command. So just tab it out and click save and there we go. So now we play the game. Uh, just need to make sure we can only add players if that space is not currently taken. Okay, now let's play. So now we play the game And we get four, so there we go. Three, four, ta-da! We have now finished our game of Connect Four. You will see that the game works. Okay, so that is how I would build a game of Connect Four in a super simple way. Please do feel free to take this game, make it your own, style it up, uh, give it next extra levels. If you could think of a funky way uh, to not have to write out all the winning arrays, uh, then please do let me know. Like I said, I was pretty lazy with this and I just stuck them all in there because I thought, you know, like it's, it's a small grid. Thanks so much again for watching and I do really want this to be a conversation. So yeah, please do uh, show me your games. Okay, nice. Later. In this next section, we are gonna be building Space Invaders. 
This game is a classic, another retro classic, in which you, as the little guy right here, have to shoot all the space invaders coming down before they get to you. Okay, so a lot of timing events here. It's a grid-based game, so a lot of stuff that you would have already covered is gonna come up, a lot of modulus work, and so on. So these are the uh, JavaScript methods and properties that you will be covering in this section. Let's do it. Okay, so to start off, I have actually already pre-made my file. So the HTML file with some boilerplate. I've named my project Space Invaders. I have linked the style sheet to the style CSS file, which currently has nothing in it. And then I've also linked the JavaScript file too, making sure that the path names are of course correct. Okay, so that is my boilerplate done. Apart from that, I have nothing else in here. So this is where we're gonna be starting off. Are we ready? Let's go. Okay, so the first thing I'm actually gonna do is in the body, I'm gonna make a div and I'm gonna call it grid. We'll give it the class name of grid so we can style it up so that we can see what we are working with. And in the style sheet, let's just make a grid. Now I'm gonna actually pre-decide that all my squares in here are gonna be 20 pixels, which means if there's 15, it's gonna be 300 pixels. So width, 300 pixels, height, 300 pixels. And then I'm gonna give it a border, solid, black, one pixel. Okay, so just save that. And now if I open this up, so copy the path, paste that, okay. There's our grid. It's gonna get the console log out too. Essentially all the magic's gonna happen inside there. And then we're also gonna get these squares. So I'm just gonna perhaps make sure that every div inside the grid, that's how I do it, that's a class name. And then in here, each square is gonna be, what do we say, 20 pixels, 20 pixels, height, 20 pixels. Okay, so that is looking good. The other thing I need to do is make sure that when they go in here, I'm gonna use display flex, I want them to wrap around each other. So flex, wrap, wrap, okay. So now let's go to putting some divs inside the grid. I'm gonna use JavaScript to do that. So to this, I would have to get the grid. So I'm gonna go const grid equals, and then get our document. If I can spell document, could not create element, but document uh, query selector. I'm gonna look for the class of grid. So make sure that's a class and store that as our grid. Now I'm gonna use a for loop let i equals zero to essentially put 225, because 15, five times is 225 squares in there. So that's a for loop to do so. And then for each time it loops, what we're we doing, I need to make a square. So const square equals document. And this time I won't create element, but I wanna create a div. And then I wanna get the grid and I'm gonna use a pen child to put the square I've just created inside my grid. So that should work. Let's just check it out. Refresh elements. So now if I look in here, let's see, you will see 225 divs have been created and put inside my grid. Let's carry on. Okay, next up, let's actually get the invaders. So alien invaders. And then I'm just gonna make an array and then exact, and use the indexes to figure out which indexes I wanna essentially put the aliens is. And I'm gonna make it three rows of them. Uh, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, uh, 22, 23, uh, 24. So I think these indexes, okay, and then uh, 0, 15, 30, because it's 15 by 15, 22, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. Okay, so that's looking fine. Those are the indexes I want my aliens to be in. So now I actually need to get all these squares. So I would do this, I'm gonna do this up here after I've put in all the squares, const squares equals document query selector 
for this time I'm going to use query search all to search for all the divs inside my grid and save them as squares and then I might as well just make, use array from to make an array of this. So now let's put my invaders actually in the uh, squares themselves. So I'm going to write a function for this function draw and then in here uh, another for loop. So for let i equals zero as long as i is smaller than the alien invaders length because we want to loop over all of the alien invaders increment i by whoops i we increment i okay so we're over each of the aliens i need to go into my squares array i'm going to pass through the alien invaders i so i'm essentially going to pass through this 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 each time and then i'm going to use class list add and I'm going to make an invader class so the invader class well invader um, let's just give it a background color of purple and then let's just make it a circle so border radius mm. 10 pixels because I'm going to be taking that and adding that to it. So let's just see if this works. So I'm going to add the class of invader. Okay, so now if I go draw, just call that function. Okay, great. We've got all our invaders. Uh, now let's get to drawing our, our shooter. So once again, I'm going to go into the squares array. I'm going to pass through a random number. So let's just say 200 class list add shooter once again I'm just going to copy that and just write shooter and make this red let's make it a square though uh, and then go here and refresh so 200 maybe we want to add two more so to make it more central so I'm just going to put current current invader oops shooter index not invader shooter index and then i'm going to save the number 202 to this let current invader into 202 so now this should be in in square index 202 great this is looking good so we've drawn all of them i think the next thing we should do is actually get some stuff moving so let's actually uh, start moving the shooter. So function, uh, function move shooter. Okay, so for this, I'm gonna be using keys on my keyboard. So I'm gonna pass through an event. The first thing I wanna do is actually remove the shooter. So we've got draw shooter, no we don't. Okay, I'm just gonna remove the shooter. So from wherever he is, we want to remove the shooter, wherever he is on the board. And then I'm going to use a switch to essentially switch out the key that I am pressing. So this is a switch statement. And the first case is going to be arrow left. Just spell arrow left correctly. That's the first case. If current shooter index is modulus width, so we're just checking if it is uh, not equal to zero. So as long as the shooter is not on, um, so if this if it's divisible by fifteen and leaves no remainder, we know we're at the right hand edge, right hand edge. Okay, so as long as it's not zero, then we can move our current shooter. Um, Uh, one to the left okay because it's minus one in the array which is going backwards one and then we break and then we need another one so this time it's case for arrow uh, right okay so if this time let's get the current shooter index and this time if it's modulus width and that is smaller than 14 or like in the first case 14 
Um, so essentially this time we are checking if it is, as long as it's not in the right hand side, then our current shooter index can move right. So we're essentially just adding one to it. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and then we break out of it. And then we need to redraw the shooter in its new position. So outside of the switch case, I'm just gonna add him again. Okay, so that should work. Now I'm gonna link this up to an event listener to listen out for not clicks, but each time you press our key down on the keyboard, and then we wanna call the function move shooter. So let's test that out. Okay, so pressing left, and that is not working. Width is not defined, right? We didn't define width. That was silly of us. Let width of the grid be 15. Okay, so now it's gonna move, 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 and it's gonna stop because it hits the edge. Move is going right, 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 and then it stops. Okay, so that works. Let's carry on. Now we need to move the invaders. So function move invaders. Mm. So now actually that worked for here. We define the right, sorry, the left edge and we've defined the right edge. But I'm actually gonna define and store it now. So left edge equals, and this time we're gonna go into our alien invaders array that we made. And if the first of the alien invaders is modulus width and that deeply equals zero, okay? So that's how we know we're on the left edge because we're in the left column because all those values uh, modulus will give you a remainder of zero. So there we go. Sorry, of course I'm rushing this because it's a speed thing, but uh, definitely do look into modulus if you don't know much about it. Uh, I do a bit of it in my course. So once again, let's check the right edge. And to do this, I would get the alien invaders length. So I'm passing through um, essentially whatever the alien length is minus one because we're working from zero and we're pressing it through the array and if the very last invader is in a column where modulus width is minus one then we know we're on the right edge so essentially we're just sort of rewriting these two in a different way so we've just defined our left edge and our right edge once again, we're gonna to have to remove the invaders. So actually, we've got a draw invader here. I'm gonna make a remove invader too by copying that and pasting that. And I'll call it remove, uh, remove. Okay, so I'm gonna remove the invader. The function is called remove. So I'm just literally gonna write remove the invader first until we can do our logic. So this time well let's just get maybe focus on the um aliens just moving in general so i'm gonna do this by okay so for let i equal zero so i need to loop over each invader and assign it a different position right so alien invaders length so we're doing it for each alien invader in our array I, uh, uh. Okay, now we're gonna get the alien invaders. Oops. Pass through an I, because so, we need to count for each one and just add a one to it. Okay, and then I'm gonna just draw the invader. So now let's put this on a set interval. So I would sort of do it uh, like this, set interval, and then I'm gonna put move in faders, and let's do it every 500 milliseconds. So let's see if that works, fresh. Okay, so great, they're moving, but they're obviously just moving one way, um, and they're going through everything, so that's not great. I'm gonna swap this out to be direction, okay? And I'm just gonna put let direction. For now, it's a positive one, but if we change it to minus one, it will go the other way. So that's something that we need, that's some logic we need to do. And I'm gonna put this on a ID so we can clear it. Invaders ID. Yet invaders ID. So I'm not, that's just null for the moment. 
Okay, so we've got that so far. Uh, the next thing that I would like to do is actually do some logic. So I'm going to do that above here. If, um, okay, so let's do for if, if it's at the right edge first. So if right edge is true, if one of our last invader is in the right edge, okay, well then we need to essentially make all of them go down. So I'm going to write a for loop again for let i equals zero. I'm going to make it go down and change direction. So i in invaders length uh, and then i plus plus. So we're going to loop over that. And once again, I'm just going to get the alien invaders. And for each alien invader, I need to essentially just add a whole width to it. So add 15. So whatever indexes there are, I'm going to add a width and put then minus one. So what's, where's this not working out right there? So I'm moving them down and I need to change the direction. So now direction is going to be minus one. So, okay, let's see if that works. All right, and we're in the right edge and then it goes down. Okay, so it's going down and it's changing direction. Cool. Okay. Mm. I mean, it's changing in the weirdest direction because it's going there. So we don't want it to go there. Um, plus one. Cool. Oh no. Why is that doing that? Direction minus one. Huh. Ah, because we're still on the right edge. Okay. Hmm. Okay, well, let's make another. Let's, if it's in the right edge and it's currently going right. So let's put let going right equals true as it always starts off going right. So if it is going right, then add the width, change the direction, but immediately put going right as false. Okay, so there and then going right as false. So it goes the other way. Okay, great. So now that we've got that, let's do for if uh, is at the left edge and it's not going right because it's going left. Uh, once again, let's get a for loop for let i equals zero, and then i is smaller than alien invaders length i plus plus, so just a for loop. Uh, so we can go over every invader. So we're going to go into each invader, and for each invader, uh, or invader index specifically, if it hits the left, I also want to add to its width. But this time, well, let's just see if, what that looks like. And then I need to change the direction this time, V1, and going right to true, as I need to change the direction. So let's see what that looks like. I have a feeling I know it's going to go down in the wrong place. So go down, go left. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, okay, so let's actually make it go back one. I was right to do that uh, and I'm pretty confident that so let's carry on. So that is good. We're, we're accounting for it so it should go all the way down. Uh, I think the next thing we need to account for is if it hits the invader. So down here if squares and the current shooter index class list contains, and if it contains invader and shooter, so if whatever square we're in contains both of those, then well, let's just console log for now. Game over, and then we would need to clear interval invader ID, whatever I called it. Come on, invaders ID. Okay, so now if we go all the way to the bottom, I mean, I don't have time for this, this is rushed, so I'm just gonna put this to 100. Um, 
So there we go. And we should get console logs and game over as soon as we hit here because both will be in the same square. Yes, game over, great, cool. And everything stops. Brilliant, so that is looking good. So instead of this, I'm actually gonna get a results display in a HTML equals game over. Now I actually need to define what is a results display. So const result display equals document query selector. And I'm gonna search for something with results or a class with results. I could do an ID that is totally up to me. It really doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna go class results. So you can style it up later. And I'm just gonna default it to one, uh, zero, sorry. Okay, so that is fine. We've got our game over. Um, the next thing that we want to do is, uh, I guess, if we hit that, but what if we just go to the bottom, right? So this time, if, actually, no, we don't want to do that. Let's do another for loop for this, for let i equals zero. As long as i is smaller than the alien invader's length, we want to get i and add increment i. Okay, now if alien invader's i, if it's larger than the square's length, we get, well, we can just use this again. So let's see if that works. Um, I'm just going to get rid of the shooter for now. Let's just see if that works, if it hits the bottom. So let's see if we get a game over. And game over. Oh, okay. We get a game over there. Why is that? Uh, is it larger than the square's length plus width? So... Let's try again. Huh. Put that like so. Ah, it's because mm, what is happening here? Let's inspect it. Invader, invader, invader. Let's just go 100. Let's see what happens. Okay, we'll come back to this. Maybe it's fine that we keep it like this and we'll just change. Something's obviously happened, but I'm fine with this for now. We can do some changing later on. Okay, so we get a game over if it gets around there, and then we do clear interval. Invaders ID. Okay, so we've got it getting a game over when we hit roughly the bottom, I don't know what is happening here. Let's just go console log squares length. I'm just gonna go like that. And then see what that actually comes up with. If, um, 
okay let's move that actually up here because we need to know what it is 225 okay and then here I'm just gonna console log alien invaders I See what number it goes up to. It goes to 209. Just gonna console the other one out as maybe it's something to do with the space invader and the current index. Ah, it is. Okay, fine. So that is actually because it's my fault, even though we got we got rid of um uh the styling for the shooter, uh the we still have the current shooter index there. So if it contains these two, we get a game over, and that's why it was stopping it. So this actually works, it's fine. Let's carry on. That's my fault. I didn't realize that uh, this was affecting what was happening and it wasn't anything to do with this funk, this for loop at all. So that is fine. We finished that. Uh, we get a game over for if we hit the um, shooter and we get a game over um, if we hit the bottom of the grid. Okay, so that is looking good. Let's go on to our next part. Our next part is going to be all about uh, shooting the aliens. So I'm just going to move that up there and write a function called shoot. Okay, so for this I need a laser ID, just like we had the IDs for other ones. We need a laser ID now and then let current laser index, so wherever the current laser index so wherever the current shooter is on our board that is where our laser is going to start from okay now we need to move the laser from the shooter to the alien invader okay so once again i'm going to write a function function move laser uh now i'm going to go in so once again i need to remove the laser from wherever it is i'm going to use the current laser index to remove, I know we haven't added it anywhere yet, but we always need to remove something before we draw it in a new location. So remove laser, and then we're gonna get the current laser index, and we're simply gonna move it up a whole width. Okay, so we're gonna minus 15 from it, and then we're gonna redraw our laser. So that's it, really. Add laser, and then what's our laser gonna look like? Well, I think our laser, it's just going to be, let's just make it a orange square, so orange. Okay, so that is our move laser function. However, we need to actually uh, hook some timing events onto this. So I'm actually going to put this... Um, so that's going to move our laser. And then let's put this maybe on a um, event listener. So document add event listener. And if I press key up, I'm going to shoot. You can have key down, whatever. It doesn't really matter as soon as you press the key down. It was going to shoot, but we only wanted to shoot. So once again, I'm going to do uh, a switch case for this. The key. And if we press, I don't know, arrow up. Let's do arrow up, sure. So if we press that laser ID, I'm going to actually put this on an interval. I'm going to move the laser so this function 100 milliseconds so why isn't this 
move laser. Oh, that's because it shouldn't be in here. Let's be here outside of this function because that wouldn't make any sense. We need, to, we need to call the function, but it's still inside this function. So let's get to doing that. Now, if I press key up, there we go. 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 Nice. Now let's get to adding some. Why is it not liking this? Cannot do profile and find line 98. Line 98. And move laser. Okay, well, it seems to be working for now. Um, I'm sure I will fix that when it comes to it. So now let's um, think of collisions and what happens when we actually interact uh, with stuff, right? So if the laser is in the same square as an alien. So if squares current laser index this time class list contains an invader so if it's in the same square as an invader well then we need to remove the laser from wherever it is we also need to remove the invader from that square and we also need to, um, let's add a boom, add boom, okay? So we're using the current laser index, whatever square we're in, we need to remove the laser, we need to remove the invader, and we need to add a boom. And what should our boom be? I'm literally just gonna make it a square boom. Uh, I actually think this should be red, so let's make it red, and let's make this one Oh, my generals in there now, We're running out of colors green. Okay, so hopefully that works. If I, it's sort of not really removing anything. Okay, let's see why not. Mm -hmm. Ah, that's why. Squares, I misspelled squares. Um, shoot. Okay, cool. I'm getting booms. Nice. If we hit it, we get booms. Okay, let's carry on. Ah, so this is giving us errors because we actually have nothing to remove, but for the next time uh, there will be. So I'm just gonna just gonna keep that there, even though it's giving us errors. Um, okay, so next up, we actually want, so once we do get a boom, we want it to disappear after some time. So I'm going to use a set time out for this and essentially write a function in here that will, uh, so our function is going to be squares current laser index class list. I want to remove the boom after, let's say, 300 milliseconds. Okay, so now the boom is going to disappear after 300 milliseconds. And so it's disappearing. Not very well, though. Okay, and then I'm going to clear interval laser ID. So I'm going to stop to see if that works. Okay. Okay, so now the laser is disappearing in a much better way because I'm stopping the laser ID from running. Okay, it hits something and it disappears rather than carrying on. So that's good. Um, I mean, it's still not getting rid, I mean, it's getting rid of the invader, but it's being redrawn. So we need to actually take care of that. Okay, so let's actually get rid of the invader from our array so it doesn't get redrawn. Const um, alien removal equals, let's get the alien invaders array. And then I'm going to use a JavaScript method called index of to pass through the 
laser index so the square where all the collisions happens okay whatever square that is the alien's going to be um whatever square that is the alien's going to be removed from the alien's array based on that so const alien removal i'm going to get the alien uh invaders uh alien okay so we need to actually hmm Let's make a uh, array, an empty array where we're gonna literally collect all the aliens that we have removed. I think that should work because we need to be collecting them. So um, aliens removed equals, so let's actually do that up here. Let aliens removed and for now it's going to be an empty array because we haven't removed any and now i'm going to actually get so i'm going to get that array and i'm going to push the alien removed i'm just going to go alien removed because it's singular and i'm putting it into the aliens removed array um okay so hopefully that should work we're going to remove it from the array and I'm going to store it. Okay, so let's have a think about this. I'm gonna be storing all the aliens removed. So if I console log aliens removed, if I shoot, okay, okay, cool. Um, I'm removing all of them. Obviously I'm removing 24 each time because keep removing it because it hasn't actually been removed. So this time we're gonna get this alien aliens removed and this time let's get our draw function. Right, now let's have a think about this. Where is my draw function? Here. Okay, so before I draw it out, I actually need to check. So if the alien invaders removed, in, does not include I, so whatever we're moving over. So if I shot um, 24, index 24, and that's included in here, then I don't want to draw it. Um, so I'm just going to talk through this again. So if the if whatever number I'm passing through here, so say it was a 24, and if that's not included in my aliens that have been removed, I can draw, I can add the class of invader. Okay, so that should hopefully fix the issue. So now if I shoot, great. Okay, now if I shoot it, they're being removed. Cool, now let's move on. The next thing I need to do is simply check for a win. So a win will be easy essentially if, where should we do this? Let's do it in here. Um, and then I can just simply go if, and I'm just going to use the aliens removed uh, array length to do this. So if alien uh, aliens removed mm, length deeply equals the invaders, alien invaders length, well then we know that we have one. So I'm just gonna put you win and then clear interval uh, invaders ID. Okay, so that should do it. Um, I guess we sort of need to add a score too. So each time we remove an alien, I'm going to put results plus plus and then let results, I'm going to start with zero. 
gonna add a score and then we're gonna also display. So we're gonna add one to the result. If we move one, I'm gonna get the result display in a HTML. We wanna put results. Okay, so let's check that out. Okay, so we're getting the scores and then hopefully I can kill them all before they get to me, but I doubt it. Okay, let's try, I'm going to uh, maybe slow it down a little bit so we can play it normally. And then let's see. Okay, if I do this, the game is over and we have won and we have finished the game. As long as it says you win, then I am happy. Come on. Oh, I'm not very good at playing this, clearly. It's going to stick around here to do it. Oh. oh and once more come on okay i can do this come on really playing to for the win here ah no Oh my god. Okay. Well, I'm pretty confident that we have won. Let's just slow it down even more, maybe. Uh, I'm going to really slow it down because I just want to get these done now. Um, I want to show you that we have completed the game, essentially, and that we can stop the timer. Okay, so if you're going to try to compete against me, um, we need to see that you win as well. Otherwise, how do we know that this game is finished? We don't. I mean, there could be a bug that I haven't uh, identified yet. So as long as I get these all off. If you want to add levels, this is a great way to add levels. Uh, just, yes, and we did it. Done. I have finished the game. I have finished Space Invaders. Finished. Woo. Okay. Hopefully you can beat my time if you want to have a go at doing this yourself. Speed coding space invaders. Okay, super simple. There's your game. Go forth, go share it. Please do tweet your uh, finished games too, only to me on Twitter. I would absolutely love to see what you have built, how you have taken your game to that next extra level. And of course, if you want to try beat me on the speed coding, then please do that too. Okay. Thanks so much uh, again, and I will see you soon. And congratulations, you did it. You finished building your games. Once again, please do share them with us on Twitter. I'd love to see what you've made. Please tag us, please tag your solutions, save them in CodePen, save them on GitHub, perhaps deploy them, and I can't wait to see them.